welcome everybody to crunch time. Jeff Booner, Lucas, Lucas, baby, Gentry. got Gentry back. He's back from the grave. Let's go. No, I'm about back Gentry. from the grave. All good. Man, it's all good. In there after yesterday. Yeah. He, he is back from the grave. <laughs> Dig myself right back into it. <laughs> Dig myself right back in. Oh not good. man, not good. yeah. Gentry was uh, in attendance for whatever the hell that was last night. But we got a packed show today. Obviously, it's Wednesdays or Wednesday. John Macroom joining the program. The Doc, which I can't wait for. Uh, also, like I'm before swimming we get, right now in the ocean like an avatar. The, it's before, like an avatar intro. Before we get into the uh, the intros here, new emotes. We got to uh, fuck the Packers, fuck the Vikings, fuck the Bears. And we have a Brad Holmes chef emoji. They're live. We also have more emojis, um, emotes, whatever you want to call them. We have them ready, but we can't put them out there because YouTube has a maximum emote until you hit a certain amount of membership. I think we're two away. So if we get some members here tonight, let's go, baby. Next cool. set of emotes, which is a Dan Campbell. We got a lead from the front emote. Yep. <laughs> Look at that lead from the front emote. Lead from yes. the front, baby. We we got some we got some great emotes, pad. man. Uh, so we're as as we get more members and as we, we continue to grow, we'll, we'll be able to get back to the people here. But boys, how are we feeling tonight? It's Wednesday, April tenth. People are fired up. Jared Goff in the media. We're gonna get to it. Don't worry. Oh, we're how getting we to that. All right. I feel great today, boys. I'm ready to go. I've got a light, nice little conversation to have about the Booner Path and Jared Goff, and I want to talk to some people out there on the Twitter Spaces. Doing about a few things. So I'm ready to roll, boys. No, I'm doing great. Obviously, missed the past two shows, so I miss the boys. I'm fired up. I'm ready to have a Wednesday show. We got the doc on later, best day of the week. So let's fucking get it, chat. Get some W's going. Yeah, Gentry, I'm happy the doc's on so we can bring you bring you back up that your Stevie Bai decided to disappoint you. But I feel good, boys. I was working out over in the old 419, and I was uh, approached. Somebody came up behind me, and they're like, hey, Crunch time. I fuck with your podcast, so it was really cool. It was, uh, came up to me out of nowhere, but seeing somebody from Toledo that's not in Detroit, because usually we we get spotted like up in Detroit, people say what's up, but to see people in Toledo starting to notice, it's a cool sign. Yeah. So we're safe in the 419. The Let's streets go. are safe for it. Hey, Let's big go. shout out to the 419, man. They, yeah. we got I didn't ask dude his name, so I was I was did just absolutely smack my dad pen before I went in there, so I was probably all over the place. <laughs> I forgot to ask him his name. <laughs> But if you're in the chat, make sure you drop it. I appreciate it, man. It made my day. It did. Whenever you guys say stuff to us, I'm sure the fellows feel the same way. Makes our days. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. Awesome. I love it. I, I love, love meeting people. I'm all about the people. You guys know the Booner Path. Yep. All about the people. I love when I hear the Booner Path. Or I hear the cool. I love that out on the streets, man. I love the people. Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. Before we start, I got to give a shout out. Hunter Holiday just became a, a, a Gold Crunch member before the show actually started. Thank you, Hunter. We appreciate you. Uh, on, he's here. helping support the fellas, which is big time. Uh, and like I said, get a couple more members. We can get these emotes out. I can't wait, man. They're sweet. I, we got a Dan Campbell one, like I said. That one's badass. So uh, we, I just can't. We can't add them. So YouTube, <laughs> shit together. Come on. What are we doing? We got Booner's broomstick bulge. Uh, he's he's giving us some love there. Yeah, let's I don't. Go. I don't know what the broomstick means, but let's. I'm all in on that one. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's. I think that's, that's a good that, thing, right? Hey, yeah, that's a. That's a aggressive the broomstick you could just do booner's bulge but you had to add the broomstick in there that's, <laughs> that's, that's a good thing <laughs> like, what, I are we, think. Oh. what are we doing here okay uh before we get to sports because there's a lot i mean mel kuyper guys two round mock old mel kuyper put out his two his two rounder and we'll Jeff see what the lions selected I, I you know i i have espn plus so i can show the people if you couldn't see i don't know if they posted it but i you got you're gonna want to see who he had the line selecting we're going to have John on, of course. We'll talk about the Jared Goff stuff. Terry and Arnold visited the Lions. He took a little photo of Jameis Williams' locker. Yep. Poking around Allen Park. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> poking around Allen Park. Just poking around. Just just interviewing. Cool talking the only one. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. There's uh, one guy I haven't we... seen there yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, hey. They, well, are you referring well, to the again? Some I'm guys you just don't to, have to meet. You just know. I'm referring to Quinn Don Mitchell. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I, I think I was going to say for his Xavier, they met with him at the combine, I think. I'm pretty sure. Yes, they did. Yep. Yeah, him and Brian Thomas Jr. So uh, some just two dogs. Two yeah, dogs. two dogs, man. Well, before we, we start, I, I like we do it, we're going to do every show. I mean, again, 
what are you guys doing for the draft? Come hang out Get with us. April 25th, 6 p.m., rooftop of bookies. Be there. Get your tickets. Link in the description. Free drinks and appetizers. We got a live show. Come hang out with us. Come get drunk with us. We'll have raffle winners announced. It's a 90s and varsity blues theme. And best outfit, you win some money. I'm uh, drink some Kool-Aid with me, please. Purchase a ticket. It tons of things come with it. I mean, you're 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 entered to win chance, a chance to win some signed lions gear. It'll be former Lions players, former Red Wings players. It's gonna be the spot. So please purchase your ticket. It's on Eventbrite, and the link is in the description. And you can All right, fellas. Off the rooftop if Nate Wiggins go 29th hey, overall. To be I can line. guarantee you, too, yeah. we're not throwing chairs off the rooftop like Morgan Wallen. I can guarantee you we're not doing nope. that. We're drinking Kool-Aid. Debatable. Yep. Shout out Morgan Wallen, though. That's what we're doing. But uh, talk Before talk. we get to Lions, Gentry. Talk to us. You got to talk to God us here it. because we, you know, we, we were live reacting to the game yesterday. Can you <laughs> explain your mindset? What happened? What went wrong yesterday for the Detroit Red Wings? And what's to come oh, on man. Thursday? Because we got another big game up here, Gentry. What's going on? Talk to us. Well, like, and like, if you look at the whole game and you look at the box score, you, you should have said that the Wings should have won that game, you know, five to two and whatnot. But sometimes you are just going to run into a hot goalie like that. I mean, there were some chances that they could have capitalized on. And um, uh, obviously the power play was over last night. So that was one of the biggest things. But that was just like a really tough spot. I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better game out of the opposing goaltender. And the Red Wings were playing really well. And then, boom, you go into 10 the second period, two goals within, you know, two minutes. And then that kind of just swung the momentum. And you kind of knew, you're like, how many goals is he really going to let up if, if he's made 30 saves or so through two periods? So it was just a really tough spot. Obviously, you got Toronto on Thursday or uh, Pittsburgh and Toronto up next. So, like, those are two really huge games. You're probably going to need to win both of those, and it'll, you're probably going to win have to win three out of the next four to make playoffs, in my opinion. But that that was just a really tough game, and like I said, it's disappointing in general to lose and have a team like the Capitals, who really sold it all, kind of jump start you right here and go right into the playoffs. I mean, it, it's it it was overall just a tough game, man, because they did have some chances and whatnot. So what you're saying, Gentry? Essentially, like everything you said, okay, yeah, you know, it makes sense. But what you're saying is the Pistons and the Red Wings no. will oh, both miss the playoffs. Do this. Yeah, Jen, if, do you, this. if you compare the Pistons to the Red don't Wings, I will I'm jump off saying, the show right is now. Is it true or not true? They're both potentially, the Red Wings potentially will be starting their offseason early with the Pistons. I'm just saying. Rip into well, him, the Pistons off season started probably <laughs> fucking five months ago, but it, it quite possibly could be. But the Red All Wings right. are still so Fair. much more far along than the Pistons, and they still do Fair. have a chance. I want to say it was like thirty-seven percent chance after losing last night. So that was really a you know kind of shit on their playoff hopes, but they still do. You never know. There's four games left and all these teams are playing kind of relatively like the same teams or the upper echelon teams. So none none of it's guaranteed. The Red Wings are you know they're gonna have to dig deep if they wanna they wanna see the playoffs. Yeah, that's so depressing. I mean, we had all our eggs in that basket. I mean, we it, it's uh it's unfortunate. What what what's what comes next, Mike? I mean, what what's next? Like, what does the off season look like? What we're we talking about the off season? They still go to the playoffs, Jeff. Let's yeah. not jump the wagon here. We're not the Detroit Pistons right now. This isn't that organization. What there's a big game tomorrow. Well, we'll, We'll talk more about the off season and stuff like that I'm after you know again, within yeah. the next two weeks if right. they make it or they don't make it. But <laughs> I I expect to see sort of a youth movement as far as those bottom two lines go. Kind of get some of your younger guys mixed Marco in there. Casper? Then, yeah, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> but um, and then Edvinson has to be in the lineup moving forward, obviously. So you'll you'll see him from now on, and you may see a few more changes as far as defenseman goes because that's really been you know. Uh, a rough spot for most of the year. And then you had, you had three goaltenders for most of the year. You'll probably cut that down to two. And, you know, you do have some young goaltenders that have kind of taken leaps. Who knows if they will be ready. That will kind of be a thing that oh, training so. camp kind of sums up, but I, I expect a more of a youth movement in general and a lot of offloading of some of these guys. And a lot of some of these players that the Red Wings do have are um, they will be free agents next year. So there's going to be some moves to be made. And I expect it's going to be more of a youth movement. I don't expect to see too many signings or re-signings, rather, besides 
uh, the offer to Patrick Kane. I still think that will definitely happen as far as an offer goes. I don't know if he will take it or not, but I think that will definitely happen. Right. But, um, yeah. And uh, please tell me you didn't download the goal horn for yesterday because that would have been a sad story. I, know uh, we I, talked I, I was going to, but we didn't even get to use it. Um, so, oh, you know, it, it, yes. You know. <laughs> Thank God. That would have been embarrassing. You tell the chat you downloaded the goal horn and they don't score. <laughs> yeah, that, honestly, Mike, that might be a reason. All right. Because you told me to download it and it just so happens uh, they scored one basically with no time left. I mean, okay. But the show was already over at that point. Um, so, but honestly, and one more thing, I think I'm bad yeah. luck. I think like I, I last like six games I've went to, they've only won like two, one or two. So it's like Jack, they've been losing a deal. lot of games though. They've been losing a lot of games. I don't Are we going to keep that same energy? I think no, no. Don't, don't, don't let Jeff. No, don't do that. Don't let Jeff steer you off of winning. Don't let him put that Pistons energy what? into the Red Wings. Jeff, okay. I love you. No, I'm looking at you right here. You're not doing that. Okay. I had to do this for the Booner Pit. This was part of me and the Booner Path here. Was That's I had fair. to get people like Jeff to lock in and stop the night. No, Jeff. Bad Jeff. Hey, you know what? Keep That's that fair. Pistons energy up in that top left fair. corner. All right. Sorry. <laughs> well, uh, b- before we before we start, I want to give a shout out to those who are here early. Etienne, who's the first one here in the chat. So appreciate you, Etienne, as always. Uh, and we got Anakin Skywalker. We got John Hughes, Shift God. Uh, oh, baby. Eduardo's here, as always. Uh, hey. the people. The people are fired up. We got um, as well. Lucas is long, long log. Can't Never approve. Fear. Can't Lucas approve. long log is here. Uh, that, that is. <laughs> That's not talking. I'm not gonna provide. I'm not gonna say yeah, something. That, that, well, you know what? We'll just uh, we'll let that one just kind of marinate. Say, but, I was gonna say like the bathroom logs, like when you go to number two, like nice long no. log. <laughs> hey, did you just say when you go number two? I didn't want to say anything <laughs> bad that might get us demonetized or something. I don't know. No, you could say well, you can I don't say know that. You can say I don't it. know what gets us demonetized around here. You got anymore. you got to wait like thirty to forty five seconds in, and then you're good. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, dude. I'm just being careful over here. You guys know me. Uh, yeah. Steve Steve Wilds. He says Jeff at the beginning of the NBA season. Weaver is an elite talent evaluator and drafter. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey, there you go, Steve. You just take best it. player available every time. BPA hey. every time, Troy. You know what? Oh man. Killian Hayes, Tyrese Albert. Oh, that's a tough one. Hey, you can't shoot 100%. You know what I mean? I mean, that, that's just Yeah, but like, you can shoot more than fucking zero. <laughs> hey, he's it's it's Panacea like hey. a parse, Like, you know, just make the move, brother. I mean, you have a layup. Take the layup and score. I, I will no, say. No, I want to shoot a half-court shot and miss. <laughs> okay, I, w- I will say, you know, he can, he can have a, it, as a, he shouldn't be a GM. He should be working scouting. He's oh not a GM. Gosh. He can't. Oh he can't do it. He can't run a team. I mean, it, for he's agency, he's Killian Hayes. I would not want him scouting. So one position. miss, he's you're disqualifying everyone else. Jack, what, dude? That's a little. I mean, we're not. We're not a guy. No, we have to cut this off. We're not doing it. This is a long road. This is a long road. We're not. Jack's been waiting on this segment. Don't let him. Don't let him heat up. Don't let him heat up. Don't, he ain't heating up. That's for sure. That, no, I'm putting Flynn. water out on that fire. Malachi Flynn. Oh my gosh. Well, Molasses Flynn. Okay. Well, <laughs> I will. I will say, guys, the Mel Kiper draft. Okay, he had a two rounder. Right. If you you guys haven't seen it, right? I mean, I told. I, well, I kind of saw it. That, no. I haven't seen it, so I have not. So who do you guys? Or I'll ask the chat if you haven't seen it. Who do you think Mel Kiper? Took at twenty nine. Xavier, right. good, I, I good old Mel Kiper, the Godfather of the draft. <laughs> who, who would you? Oh, who God. do you think he I, had the line? I, I think, I think he, he's gonna align with you. I think he's go. You know, the Detroit Lions. <laughs> him siding with him, just going out off the roster. They need one thing. They need a corner. <laughs> and when you're looking at the board, you know, field. When I look at it, yeah, they could go BPA. Maybe a Darius Robinson sitting there. But they're gonna go and they're gonna get Kool Aid McKinstry. That's who I think. So Kool Aid, that's who I think he's taking the okay. first. Whoa. Well, I see. I see Bryce. Bryce says J- JPJ. Hey, you know, Bon J says I'll say Jordan Morgan. Steve Wilds wide receiver. Allen says I'm going chop. <laughs> oh, you know chop. what? How, that'll, that'll how about the rooftop of bookies for sure? How about a Donnie Mitchell? <laughs> so, hey. yeah, so. Hey, the Godfather, Mel Kuyper. 
He had Adani Mitchell going at 29. Wow. And his explanation is Detroit general manager Brad Holmes had a tremendous 2023 draft class, which featured impact, excuse me, contributions from tight end Sam Laporta, running back Jameer Gibbs, defensive back Brian Branch, and linebacker Jack Campbell. Can you do it again? Looking at this Lions roster, there aren't many holes to fill. I can <laughs> yeah. make a case for them taking the mouth, boys. I can I can take <laughs> you can think about it while I'm reading this. <laughs> Wait, there aren't many holes to fill. I can make this case for them taking a depth uh, in f- interior offensive lineman and edge rusher or corner, but receiver also stands out particular, particularly one who could run vertical routes and play on the other side of James Williams. Mitchell could be a fit at six, two. He ran a four, three, four 40 showing off his impressive physical tools. He had 11 touchdowns last season. You might consider this a luxury pick, but this roster is so talented that the lions can afford to take Mitchell and Kool-Aid McKinstry went right after him. At mm. Can I, to, can to I also throw out there a couple other people who were on the board as well. I want to throw out. Yeah, Dude, this is going to shock a lot of people. Jerzon Newton didn't go, I think, until 44 in the second round in this mock draft. And J- uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, I think, went at, let me have it, I have it here, at six or at 47. So, like, uh, Jerzon Newton was on the board. Jackson Powers Johnson was on the board. Kool Aid McKinstry was on the board. And Mel Kuyper went, Give those boys a Donnie Mitchell. So there was a lot of big time. There was a lot of big time dudes on the um, on the board, and, and he gave us a Donnie Mitchell with that. So it's it's, it's I, I like it though. I like. Yeah, I'm it. not going to hate that one. If he falls there, I'm with it. I mean, no, he's probably. I'm, I'm not with it. He's gonna I'm, fall. I'm fine. I'm I'm fine. Ooh. I'm fine. No, a Donnie Mitchell is going to be sitting there waiting. It's like a kid at school waiting for his parents to get picked up, and everyone's getting picked up. Yeah, <laughs> to the first round. <laughs> Like that's a Donnie, Donnie goes Mitchell. in the first mile, round. No, he will. He will. He'll probably go. You won't you know, fall past. around where the Lions are selecting, if not early second. He's going to be yeah. like from like twenty seven. What are the Bills pick? What what pick do they pick? Twenty eight. Twenty eight. Like they got Brian Thomas Junior. in this in this draft. Yeah, and, and it's not even a slight at a Donnie Mitchell. You I mean you you guys know how I feel about wide receiver in the first round. I'm just not. I'm on. I'm not on board with it. Um, it it's not like he doesn't fit right. Adonis and he could. He's a true X. Big body runs a four three four. Big, he can make contested catches. Like I'm just not. I'm. I, it sounds like I'm repeating myself all the time. But boys, like I, the, the receiver we went down that list, Jeff. We went down that list yesterday of all those those studs taken past twenty five over the past couple of years. Well, it, it's, not, it's, not, homework, by the way, it. it's not. It's not even about like take a corner i i just would prefer any other position to be honest that's just me besides wide receiver but what do you guys think donnie mitchell what's up go ahead judge i was gonna ask you jeff swap out ad mitchell for brian thomas are you okay with it <laughs> yeah now we can have a conversation okay sir, okay based on how what what he was like I can I can make sense of either pick. I still wouldn't be in love with it because it's the wide receiver. But again, Brad's like best player available. I just don't know if you can make the case that Donnie Mitchell is the best player available. I mean, let's be real. Brian Thomas, maybe you could. I don't know. I'm not as high on a Donnie Mitchell as other people. I think he's good. He's yeah. solid, but I, I just don't. I, I wouldn't be mad, though, to where I fall with this. It's like I wouldn't be mad if they if they got a, another weapon at, at 29. I, I, I'm not going to sit here. Like maybe the Donnie Mitchell thing isn't it. Um, and I didn't even think he falls to Detroit, so I haven't like I've I've watched him play in in games, but I haven't sat there and watched film of him, so I don't know if he's like that dude to where it's it's worth the 29th pick. Obviously, like Brian Thomas, I've seen and guy Xavier Leggett who's going to be available, but I'm I'm with it if if they if Brad Holmes is like, hey, let's add another weapon, like that's a need. You just lost Josh Reynolds, like that's a need. If if that's BPA, man, I'll I'll do it, but it just feels like there are other players that were available at that time to where I would say, yeah, we can like. A Jackson Powers Johnson, I'm not going to sit there and be like, if he's available and you get depth at that offensive line, like you keep your main thing, your main thing, and keep building that up, I wouldn't, like that's where I would rather almost have and go get someone at 61, get a wide receiver there right. at 61, like a Jalen Polk, who 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 played literally, a Jalen Polk, and I'm not, this isn't anything out of Donnie Mitchell, but when I'm just thinking about it, Jalen Polk put better numbers up at Washington than, than um, a Donnie Mitchell, and Jalen Polk has th- two other receivers that are probably going to go in the top two rounds as well. So, you know, th- that production there and and 
a lot of people, at least from what I'm seeing, I know Adam's in the chat, a lot of people, they base everything in the draft and, and how good you're going to be in the NFL off just production. So there that is. So you might as well, do that, you, know, just take the, do you might as well hey. just take the players who have the highest stats and, and at every position. No, no, not that. I think, and I, I'm not just to contextualize it for you a little bit, Boone, the thing why people are going to put Mitchell over Polk, like every time on, on their big boards right now is because Mitchell can go through all three levels of the field. He already has been doing it in college. Polk is more so a deep guy, which again, just why his productions, they're not saying he's a bad player, but that's why Mitchell is a, a lot different. higher the on game's people's different. boards. Yeah. yeah. Film's probably but a little fellas, different. I, th I thought you were about to come to the dark side, Booner. Get a weapon at 29. I think it's the smartest thing to do at that spot because if you look, the Lions needed to upgrade their defense, obviously, last year. They have done that. So if you you look around the defenses of the other powerhouse of the NFC, Philly's defense, they got better, and I would say just the front seven, they're always going to have a good defense there. San Francisco, you can say the same thing. So how do you defeat that when I, – I think it's fair to say that going into the season at least, between San Fran, Philly, and Detroit, Detroit has the lowest defense out of those two. So it's not like drafting a player in the first round is going to overcome that. What, how do you overcome that? You get as much weapons as possible, so there's no way – that Philadelphia can play their elite defense they want to because they have to react differently when they're schematically going up against you. I just think the best way to put yourself in Super Bowl mode in an offensive-driven league where defenses win championships, but to get to the Super Bowl most of the time, you need to have that offense. I, I, I think that's how you do it. You go get a playmaker at 29 because, yes, you can get a Jalen Polk at 61. You can get a Brendan Rice. I do like those guys. But the players in the first round are in the first round for a reason. This is one of the best wide receiver classes we've seen in a while. So if they're a first round draft pick, it's for good fucking reason. So if you get one of those guys to help Jared Goff, to help the other wide receivers to create more space, to help Sam Laporta, to help this run game, you can't stop it. You just can't. Yeah. I, you won't be able to stop this offense. I don't think any defense could stop this offense outside of injury. Real, real quick, Jeff, before you go to the Lions pick, can you scroll? Um, I, I see it up on the screen there before you share it. Can you scroll to the Eagles second round pick for me just real quick? Well, right. Well, Cause, cause I, I just want to this. It's but just to Lucas to Lucas's yeah. point, getting a weapon. It, it's they it, they they what they did. You're gonna you're gonna hate what he has the Eagles doing. I think I just messed it up for Jeff. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, let's <laughs> stay on a Donnie Mitchell, then we'll get to it because I want to build. Yeah, well, that up. I, it's I to that to point. It. It's to that point where I'm pretty sure Mel Kiper has the the Eagles in the second round taping taking Xavier Leggett. I'm pretty sure. Oh. I could be wrong, but they ha he has them taking a wide receiver a to add here. more. I, I'm pretty sure it's Xavier Legat. I could be wrong um, on who it was, but he has them taking a wide receiver to add with Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, and, and Saquon Barkley. Like, that's – you You need to keep these, like – you need weapons. You need weapons. And, and like, you see a team like the Eagles, if if they do that and, and they do what Mel Kuyper says they're going to do, that's scary. Oh, they take Jalen Polk. My bad. They take – not Xavier Legat. They take Jalen Bolt so, or Polk. So, that, that, that that's your adding weapons go get me some weapons jeff i'm sorry if i messed you up over there i see you over there <laughs> no it, it, no it's okay <laughs> I, I was i'm trying i was just looking to see where xavier Leggett was drafted uh in I, it might be round one yeah i mean i see oh we went to the chiefs we went to the yeah, chiefs, the chiefs. 32 chiefs overall to, yeah that's the, what the it chiefs. was here oh, the chiefs that. just to show you, you don't the want chiefs that too. Xavier that's again. What it was. I knew he went somewhere where I was like, oh man, that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> that guys, would be a problem. Peep, little side combo, but did you it relate to the lines as far as Super Bowl chances and other teams? Did you see what happened with Rasheed Rice? Eight charges yeah. going his way, most likely. Yeah. yeah. Jeez, Wild. Man. When the, and they're gonna take a wide receiver. Yeah, man. I, yeah, they it's they have to. They really, I mean, they could add to their offensive line, maybe go get another guy in the interior of their defensive line or edge on the other side of Carlathis, but they need a wide receiver. So I don't they I could see them trading up and getting a wide receiver. I could see them trading up and getting a Brian Thomas. Lucas, are you would you be mad if we drafted A D and we passed up on Xavier and he gets drafted what two picks after us? I, I would, but at the end of the day, if Brad sees that they're taking wide receiver in the first round and his flavor is A D Mitchell, then who the fuck am I to judge him? You know what I mean? Like I just want a, my 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 player is Xavier Leggett, but I think wide receiver is the way they should go. I could be wrong, but if because with A D Mitchell, he's in my opinion really good at everything, but elite at nothing. But if you can do that, that allows you to have another target that can just go through all three. Ah, am I hanging still? Or am I internet gone? You're good. You're good. We hear you. Well, 
<laughs> something about a Donnie Mitchell and AD Mitchell, or something. Yeah. Well, he fellas, I'll, I'll say I'll say this, okay, with the whole you know wide receiver in the first round uh, in in there. I think Lucas is back now. I think you're back, um, brother. No, no you're not. Gone. Okay, it, but <laughs> I will say this, okay, about the whole like wide receiver in the first round thing. If it is a wide receiver, I'm not gonna you know throw my drink and and be like, what the hell are we doing? It's not something that I think the Lions desperately need to kind of target in the first round. But again, based on Brad's philosophy, best player available. If he believes a wide receiver is the best player available, I understand. I just think, and, and Adam put this in the chat, and I'll ask you guys this. I think it's a good discussion. And essentially, it's if you could draft an all-pro player at 29, well, what position? Well, hold on, let me just uh, get rid of that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, we're back. If you could draft an all-pro player at 29, what position would you want on this Detroit team? That's because again, if you're taking a player at 29, you believe in in his ability, right? You get a fifth year option. If he's a first rounder for a reason, I know 29 is not the same as picking in the top 10, but you still have a lot of you still have a lot of faith in what he can be. You hope that player can be all pro. When I look at this team, I don't think, man, they need an all pro wide receiver. Like I think they need an all pro edge, uh, a next Aiden, or an all pro corner. That's how I feel about it. What, what, what would you guys say to answer this question? If you could an pick all, an all-pro. An all-pro edge at 29, sign me the fuck up. Like, there's no other no other answer, I think. I, I, mean, I would say, guarantee – if you're guaranteed me an all-pro, like, guarantee, like, whoever yeah, you Oh, actually, yeah, you could do – Give me a corner. corner. I'll go – I'm going to go a corner. corner. Yeah. Like, give me a corner I, I, that's an all-pro at 29. Thank I, you. I, I would I still think want you, an edge over a corner, but either of the two. Yeah, either of the two. Yeah, it would have to be corner, in my opinion, because to have an all pro, all pro corner, as far as usually the guys that are all pro corners are usually the like the all pro corners every year type of deal. Like it's hard to find all pro corners, but you can find most of the time Pro Bowl defensive ends easier than Pro Bowl cornerbacks that are consistent. But it's just the problem is at twenty nine, you're it's you're not in a good range to find an all pro anything outside of running backs, linebackers, wide receivers, possibly tight ends and linemen, in my opinion, like. Maybe defensive tackles, but you just look. You could at an end. You could at an edge, but I think they just have to be elite at something. And I look at the guys that are, that are there this year, and I don't see anybody that's elite at anything. They're the guys that are very good at some things, but then when you look at their whole game, there's just massive holes. Like the Chop Robinson, elite athleticism, sucks at everything else. Darius Robinson, very good, but not elite at anything. I just think there's factors that aren't there. Unless somebody drops like a lot to or something like that, I don't see anybody at 29 that has all pro potential. Well, we got uh, we got an appearance he, here, Big, Big John, real quick. He, he's Big John, John uh, number seventy-seven, baby. I've been waiting to do that for months, like a big dude. John, Chad Big John, few and far between. Am I right? What's up, boys? Uh, Let's yeah, shout call out Big, Big John. John. What, what would you guys? So you guys say corner or edge? Where are you at, Boone? I mean, if it's an all pro at twenty-nine, a corner is the value. Like if you get an all pro corner at twenty-nine, that's great. Yeah. Like that is unbelievable in my opinion, and especially on this team, you already have Aiden Hutchinson who could be an All Pro next year. Wide receiver, you already have um, Amon Ross, St. Brown. You know, you have All Pro offense alignment, multiple of them already. The only thing you're missing is a is a corner, an elite corner. Carlton Davis maybe can get to that if he's in the right position, but you don't have that yet, like a, a proven one. So I'm I'm sitting there with that, dude. I'm corner. Give me the corner. I'm, I'm locked I think, in. I'm, I, mean, I get the like, points you- though. All your all your corners are you know decent to like above average. You add another all pro defensive end on a line with Aleem, DJ Reader, Aiden Hutchinson. Like those guys will make do when you're always getting pressure on the quarterback with two elite edges and then those two huge guys up the middle. So like I'm fine with above average corners if my defensive line is eaten every single play like they would be. Is it Don't then? Forget. Is it unfair for me to like say for Brad right? If you're picking at 29. Not that, like Lucas said, typically you're not finding all pro. I mean, you got TJ Watt. Okay, fine. But, like, how often are you getting those type of players? It's not mm-hmm. common. But shouldn't that be the priority, trying to find somebody that, like you said, Lucas, if you, if somebody was elite at everything, they'd be going top 10, top 15. Mm-hmm. But somebody that has the tools to eventually be that, like, that's why I'm like, I don't know if prioritizing wide receiver – would be the move like Lucas to your point with like Xavier Leggett and stuff. It's like, if he was an all pro potential, he should be in the top 15 with these other guys. 
that's where I'm at a little bit with it. But I the get wide the wide receiver sense. class, though. Like that's I, I get I'm the wide receiver class, team. but if you're just that good, though, like if you're just that good, even with the wide receiver class, like you would be considered in there with the like with these top guys. Like you would be up there. You would be like, oh, well, he, Brad. He's, he's Brad like would have to there. think if you're taking Xavier Leggett that if he if he selects Xavier, he believes that he has that potential, which for is sure. fair. You know, like yes, or Donnie sure. Mitchell, fair. It's I think once like, you get to a certain point in the in the first round, it's every position, every player. It's if they were all pro potential and you knew they had that talent, they would be going top fifteen, and that's just a fact. I just I think, mean, but like that's why you look at like the Brian branches where it's like, like I'm sitting there, I'm like, well, it's, yeah, you got to find those guys. Brian, I'm like, what are what are what's going on? hundred percent. I, I guys like, like that for sure. Where you they drop down where it's like if that's a lot to situation, yeah, but. I just think looking at the board right now, the all pro potential, I don't see a lot of it in the defensive end and corner position. Now, can you get guys that are good and I'd be happy with taking? Yes. But if you're asking, like, if you're going to find an all pro, I don't think it's on those two positions this year. Well, let's get to the second round pick. Okay. And this, I think, answers some of the questions here. They had the, or Mel Kuyper had the Detroit Lions. What do you, what, what position you think, old, uh, the godfather Mel? We think he prioritized in the second round. He took a wide receiver. I already saw. I know I'm talking not participate. So Lucas and Mike, you, you took a wide receiver. What what is Uncle Mel thinking? All right, at this point, I already seen it now. So uh, I, I'm trying to think because I've seen a lot of Mel's stuff, and I'm trying to think of the guys that he likes. And I'm gonna go edge because there's a couple guys that. Well, you got a Deesa Isaac. Oh, this is. I was really gonna say a Deesa Isaac. Well, he, he I, wrote here. Isaac was overshadowed a bit by Chop Robinson. But he actually outproduced his teammate last season, racking up seven and a half sacks. He's not as explosive as Robinson, but he's a well-rounded defender who has an impressive, uh, impressive get off at the snap at 247 pounds, 247 pounds. He could play on the edge rushing rotation in Detroit, which needs to get more out of its pass rushers, not named Aiden Hutchinson. I love this. <laughs> love yeah, I'm this. okay with that. If, if, if there was like a, if day two was as big as day one and like there was much of the anticipation I would be running up to the to the podium butt ass naked with Adisa Isaac at sixty one. If you could have a way to get Adisa Isaac at sixty one, I think that you can just stop worrying about the edge position as far as in the draft. Like you just, you're fine, you're fine because that's a guy that can develop even in year one as a three three down edge. In my opinion, he can do it all. Dog, he is. I, I'm. I like the dude. What is he? Six four two. What, what was it? Two fifty. Yeah, something around there. Yeah, and I think a second round pick, that's that's good value. I, I mean, you're getting a pretty damn good player. So I'm cool with this. Maybe I'm not in love with the first round pick, but I'll take a decent Isaac boys. That's a great pick. Yeah, I'm in. Give me an edge. That's a, the first man. two picks. Give give me an edge, man. I'm I'm in on that. And the D size yeah. at 61, I feel like it is a steal. If he could be better than Chop Robinson, that, that Lucas, you know, will die on the I'll, hill with, which, which I'm going to follow that battle. Even if they aren't, aren't, aren't in Detroit, I'm going to make sure I follow that battle for their careers. Um, but I'm interested to see. I'm, I, I like the pick. I'm, I'm in on it. It's, it's, mm-hmm. va- it's value getting a decent eyes against absolutely it is i don't know how much i trust these mal kuiper drafts though i mean again yeah guys fall i don't know <laughs> so he probably won't be there at 61 but if that oh, happens what, you yes. think mel can be wrong how dare mel, it, it's oh, more so like look at the op- can mel be right it's like mel can be right <laughs> mel, mel can be right that, that's more so what it is well he had jj going top five too mm-hmm mm-hmm Cook, who, no. do, who do you have? He's Vikings? That. Char- he's uh, not, yeah, Vikings trading up. At least the he's charge. not just stat watching when it comes to JJ or, or I'm sorry, players in the, in the draft. Well, <laughs> well, he did say JJ is a top 20 prospect to him, but he has the the Vikings going and getting him. But he's going top five, Boog. Some would right, say well, Jay Coker esque. Let's go. Let's get to uh, imagine, going, imagine going top five in those uh with those numbers. Matt, that's crazy, dude. <laughs> well, that's imagine only having to put those numbers up and going top five. That's oh man, I'll sign up for that all day. Well, speaking Jake of Coker. quarterbacks, we, we got about imagine 10 minutes football before, games. Tough. We got about 10 minutes here before John joins, and we'll probably continue this conversation Stop. later. But it, it, Jared Goff had Lions Twitter on fire today. He had media outlets apologizing, he had fans talking back. And I'm forth. ready to go. Uh, and I, I posted my thoughts on it earlier. It's on our channel, you can check it out. Uh, people are. You know, they they liked it. I guys, and I'll just say this before we play it, because I'm I'll let you guys kind of speak on it because I've already kind of spoke on it. I love this. 
I absolutely love this from Jared. Here's the video. Um, he was on his it, what you said, Booner's best friend, like somebody that he's known. It's for one of his close yet. friends that he went to college with. Well, here's what Jared had to say about Detroit sports media and uh, kind of what you know the narrative's been. And I, I like this out of Jared. I have this like. I probably need to drop it pretty soon here because I'm going to hopefully be in Detroit for a long time. But I have this thing with our local media where like they they almost like relish in in negativity at times. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's what gets clicks and that's what sells. But it it's 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 no longer what they need to live in. Like, right. hey, guys, like we, we have a good team. We've had success. Like we can be happy about that. We can celebrate me. that and not have to write about how like we're constantly the underdog like no like teams are going to be gunning them for us now like we're we won the division and all that and, I, and i'm probably overthinking in my head just because it's the chip on my shoulder and the um competitive the competitor in me yeah. but um in that moment i was just giving that guy a hard time i actually really like him but i, mean, uh, I think that's great and i have this like well there's the there's the comment jared you know basically saying that you know he, he through his time he's felt like detroit media sometimes kind of relishes in the negativity and I, I don't i don't think the Lions are the only team that does i think this is a common thing i mean you go to philly dallas i mean even when teams feel it there's always complaining um but i, I do think the lions are interesting uh just as a team because there's it's been so miserable for so long so fans are like getting used to this new idea but boone i know you felt a certain way about it uh, about this video and it fired up yeah i mean i this is this is the thing and and the one thing i hate about this as well and i'm sure all of you guys saw it Jared Goff, at the end of the day, like, he's right. He's not wrong. The Detroit Lions have been bad for so long that media has been so negative about this team. And now that they're good, and it's not like they just had a good year. Like, they're now going to be consistently good. I think it's fair, and, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, Jeff, Gentry, Lucas. Like, I think it's fair for him to say that, to be like, hey, listen, it's time for us to kind of take that next step. Hold up, Lucas. Just let me. I'm gonna go. Oh, off. I thought you were like literally saying like. No, 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 no. That was just like <laughs> my um, bad. That's that's on me. I take kind of it, it's time. Like these, these, like you're a lot. Like Jared Goff should be able to say that. Now the fact that after that, and this is what kind of ran me the wrong way a little bit. There were so many people on Twitter today that were just like trying to defend and be like, whoa, 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 Jared. Like that's our job. No, like yeah, that's your job. But guess what? It's time, at least in my opinion, it's time to take that next step because that's like when I made the Booner Path six, seven months ago, eight months ago, that was part of the reason why I created the Booner Path was the negativity, the, oh, we're, we're always so negative. This team can't do this. This team, team can't. It's no. Hey, li- li- like, listen, fellas, I'm trying to show the fans and show the people that this is a legit organization now. They're doing things the right way. Jared Goff has turned things around. Dan Campbell's turned things around. Brad Holmes has turned things around. And we don't need to just sit there and talk about that 24-7, about how bad the Lions have been, how we're underdogs. Like, no, this is a legit organization now, a team that's going to win Super Bowls, a team that's chasing for NFC championships, the NFC North all the time. Jared is 100% right. We don't need to sit here and, like, that that like I'm just I'm on that and I don't think Jared's in the wrong for even saying anything. I think it's fine for him to say something. He should be allowed to say something because it's all negative things that come out typically. It's when are we going to take that step from SOL to brand new Lions, move on and say, hey, let's cover a real football team now and let's go out there and do this. And this isn't a shot at like the media and everyone does such a great job. We're gonna have to dock on it a little bit. It's just more so the fact that people get mad about a guy like Jared Goff saying what he said today. He should, your quarterback should be able to say that stuff. Like, hey, fellas, like, it's time for us to turn the table. It's time for us to flip the page. This is a new football team, a new organization. This is a new everything. Like, it is, it is time to, it's time to move on. Keep asking the questions and the negative, keep that stuff coming. But like, Jared Goff's, like, the, the question that he was talking about, the, that was asked to him, I believe it was about like Wojo or so, someone asked him about the, the players for the 49ers. He said it on this show. He was just sticking up for, for the fellas. They asked him a question about how the 49ers have so many all pro players. Guess what? Lions had almost just as many. It's facts. Same thing. So I just think it's a I don't know. I don't I don't get why people were online today mad that Jared said that. I don't know why this blew up as much as it did. Jared should be able to say stuff like that and be able to be like, hey, listen. I I don't think I think Jared understands when you're bad and you're losing, you're gonna get criticism. I think he's fine with that. But I think there is the side of it to where it's, hey, when you are winning football games, why are we still, why are we still sitting here complaining and talking about, oh, can they do this? Can they do this? Oh, we need a new quarterback. Is Jared Goff going to get replaced? No offense at you, Jeff, but you know what I'm saying? Like, what are we doing here? 
We have a good yeah. product. <laughs> I think that's all he was trying to say. Sorry for yeah. that. Yeah. I, I want to say this before I say anything. I have no problem with what Jared Goff said. Like, I'm not saying, like, how could Jer- Jared Goff say that? But at some point, like, that's part of the job, especially when you're a quarterback. Like, you're going to receive backlash, especially when you're going through the season and things are sky high. And then in the middle point, things kind of fell on their face and Jared Goff isn't playing. Like, the backlash is going to come. I think that's natural with any sports city that is passionate about it. Like, you go to L.A., like he was talking about, like, the last thing people are thinking about in most for the part in LA is fucking Rams. Like when you go to Detroit, when you go to Michigan, like the Red Wings, the Lions, the Tigers, the Pistons, like people give a fuck more about them than a lot of other cities. So when something right. that bad happens in Detroit, like you're going to hear about it. But to Booner's point, that's not what Jared was like, talking yeah. about, though. Well, I think he's talking about think. like when it's like people are still stuck in their head about, oh, like bad lines, stuff like that. Like that's part of the job like when people don't see the lines that they were promised in a week they're going to react that way just because that's the nature of what's going on during that week so i just think it's part of the job like i do think that the media could be more positive about things but at the end of the day especially in detroit there's always going to be negatives yeah and i mean like i i agree to a certain extent but like i don't think there's like really anything to be offended about and i'm so confused on like what's so bad and like the outrage i've seen like a million different people media members like quote tweeting this and whatnot and they're like all offended by it and i'm the only thing that leads me to be, believe that it's true like i mean yeah that's that's the only thing your butt hurt because it's true and he called you out on it and he's been consistently do that Facts. and as far as the lions media goes they are the most negative out of any Detroit. I mean, besides the Pistons, probably, but like, you don't hear like too much positives. But and well, I mean, you from some guys rather, and I, I don't know. I so I think that's uh, that is sort of true, and a lot of like radio identities, or whatever, they are very negative as far as the lines go. So I think if they're offended, it's probably just true. Yeah, it's a fact. Real quick. Metric. Yeah, and, and I think it, it, I do agree with a lot of what you guys are saying. Like, and I and I get my thing. My takeaway was like, cool. Like, if Jared Goff gets fired up and motivated, like athletes mm-hmm. need that extra that fuel. If he if he wants to use the media and use those questions as fuel, like, go ahead. He's played at a high level the last two years, so continue to do that. Like, we praise guys like Michael Jordan for getting mad at I did the meme. I took it personal, like take everything personal. Like if, if that's what motivates you, you see him play on a, with the chip on his shoulder. He's played at really the best two years. I think of his career personally, like with how he's played. So, you know, I, I have no problem with it. You know, I, you know, you can, and I know it's your point, Boone, you bring it up me. Cause it's not just you. I, I've people, have said, Oh, Jeff, he's talking to you. No, I, I don't think so because I've given golf his flowers. I, now yeah. there might be something, you know, there's there's a way I feel about the financials, which is something I still feel. But it Jared as a person, as a football player, that dude's turned his career around. And when he first got to Detroit, remember guys, and I was I said this, I'll say it. I thought he would be a bridge quarterback. That's what I took from when they threw him in the trade. I thought, you know what, this guy's gonna be a bridge, and then you'll eventually get your future. He turned it around and proved me wrong, dude. He's played at a high level. He's I said, said last year before this this season, I, he's the second best quarterback in the NFC. This year he played like the best quarterback, if not one of these. So all, all I listen, credit to Jared, man. Like I, I got I, nothing but respect for him. I that's do. the thing. It's like I respect like the the way he like I don't hate what he said at all. Like I'm I'm fine with it. And then the guy we're about to have the doc on, like he asked some tough questions as well. And I'm sure he's I, I would guess that he's on the same side to where a little bit to like, hey, you're gonna ask those questions. You're gonna probably get answers you don't want to hear or answers you want to hear. And Jared you know, in this podcast, he gave an answer that some people didn't like. But to me, it's like it's it's fine. Like that's part of it. Like, and I get Lucas. I get your point to where, yeah, Jared. Like you're gonna get the criticism. Yeah, okay, you're gonna get the criticism, but you're gonna get guys like Jared Goff who are gonna say something about it, and he's got a chip on his shoulder, and he's gonna use that as motivation. Just because you said something about it doesn't mean he can't take the criticism. Because you have to yeah. think what he went through from when he got kicked out of L.A. Basically. All of that criticism to his first year now in Detroit took all of that whole year of criticism. You can't say this one comment here that he can't take the criticism and he needs to be able to do that because he's literally taken that for years and years and he's been able to, he has had that chip on his shoulder and he's won football games now and he's proved people wrong. So I'm fine with him. Personally, I'm fine with him saying stuff like this, like go ahead make those comments, go do what you got to do. Like I, I think it's it's like I'm a quarterback. I want my quarterback to have a little bit of an edge. Yeah, and a little bit of that dog in him, Boone. 
That's all it is. <laughs> more of, more of just cheap, calling baby. out because there is certain not all of, like writers are like this. Like John's fantastic. He gives you a, a good balance of the good and the bad, and he asks the tough questions. But there are some people that are just straight negative all the time, and those are the people that he was calling out, at, and, you know, indirectly. And but does anyone actually know who he's specifically talking about? Because I was like, like searching was, through the comments trying to find it. Like, is yeah, he it was specifically a, calling was, out one person. Yeah, about he asked this? a question. Yeah, well, I think it was, who who was it, Jeff? I think it was Woj. Uh, That's right. I think yes. Yeah, yeah. He asked a question. Uh, it, it was it was the question. It wasn't even. I don't even think that big of a deal. It was just he asked about the 49ers all pro players, I believe, in the weapon. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry, you and, did bring that yeah. up earlier. Never well, let's up, let's get John on. We'll get the Doc's thoughts because uh, yeah. I was texting. I was texting John today, dude. He. That's why I, I couldn't wait. It was like. Duh. It's like a gift from the universe, like the Jared Your Goff clip. calling out the media, and we got our guy, one of the best in the business, John Macron, to join the program. So please dope. welcome him in, Mr. John Macron. Look at that, the da joining the program. Of course, you guys know him, publisher of All Lions. You can check it out. Link will be in the description, and he's the host of the Detroit Sports Podcast. Doc, what's going on, my man? Let's go, Doc. Fellas, you know what kind of night it is? It's a tequila night. Tequila. Oh, it's a good night. Damn. I should have known. Look, first and foremost, Jared Goff ripping the media is good for business. And <laughs> we're way up today because of Jared Goff. So thank you. Wednesdays in my business, a little bit slower in the middle of the week. So, Jared, thank you. You put some money in my coffers today. Cheers to that. Hey, and John, what what you think? I, I saw you talking about it. Uh, we'll start this off, and the, the boys got some questions as well. But just your takeaways from it. I know you wrote an article. It's up on our lines. Uh, but just your reaction to what Jared said. What are your some of your takeaways, kind of what you talked about in your article, which is, is, is a must read, by the way. Go check that out. Thank you, boys, and I appreciate the time. Look, I am a media member, but I came to the game a much different way. I started as a podcaster. I felt using this pretty face and this golden voice was going to be the best avenue for me to be able to cover sports in Detroit. And luckily in five years of podcasting weekly, I built a loyal audience that has now carried over with the partnership with SI and fan nation. So to me, the reason why all the media members quote tweeted, and I want you guys to understand this concept because you guys are growing a brand. You want as many viewers as possible. So when the quarterback of the team hyper focuses on Wojo's one question, and says the media loves to focus on the negative when all year there were predictions that the Lions were going to win the NFC. A guy like me, who is prone to be more bold and say and speak his mind, I predicted the team would potentially win 13 games. When there's this overwhelming positivity when the team won their first two playoff games, the city is chanting Jared Goff's name. To say that there's a hyper focus on the negative – I just simply disagree with. I thought that the, the media was fair in the, giving the team their flowers and also recognizing, too, though, there is a bigger league out there. there Wojo asked, look, a lot of the national media is going to talk about San Francisco, and a guy with a big ego like Jared Goff took offense to it. Now, he's allowed to say it. He's allowed to speak his mind. But when you're a media member and you're trying – to build an audience and keep your audience, any situation in which a player incorrectly kind of characterizes it, he inc he incorrectly characterized it. He should have just said Bob's question. I didn't take. I didn't like it to. But to lump everybody into that one question, when by and large the media has been fair, is going to have an impact on some journalists and some outlets. And to me, the reason why the media members responded is the same thing. Is the same aspect is the same psychological aspects that he's responding to is that we are out there every day covering the team and we give bold opinions. We write about the things that the players say. We give good takes and we give takes that we say, well, potentially opinions of things that the team's doing that we don't like. And it can't be universally positive, Booner. It can't be that way. And whenever the quarterback drops a bomb like that, it has a, a tangible impact on readership, trust, and in my business, my goal is to keep gaining followers, not losing followers. So the reason we say something is if 15 people, for example, are going to take Jared Goff's comments and say, oh my God, I hate the media, I'm not going to read anymore. 
Well, if I save two by saying, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, I disagree. The media is a little bit more fair, is not as toxic as you think. If I save those three or four listeners, then that's then that's the reason why we defend ourselves because the media did a good job. And look, remember, I want you again. I've said this on your airwaves and I'll say it again. That's why I act the way I act. Journalism is writing what players don't want written. That's the definition of journalism. The rest is PR. Okay. The lines have that. Danny Rogers, Tim Twentyman, uh, Mike O'Hara, they work for the team. Now they do good work, but they spin things positively. So the media's job is to poke, ask questions, ask the questions why. So here's what a journalist like me, I believe I am a true journalist at heart because I ask these questions. What are the Lions won? Jack shit, nothing. They got to the final four. Congratulations, that's Lions good. In the history of the NFL, who's the team that's still on the list as being an organization that hasn't won the Super Bowl? The Detroit Lions. So until they hoist the trophy, state that they're number one, then you're going to face criticism. And for him to say it, I respect it. He doesn't want to read that kind of stuff. He doesn't want to read that there's still people questioning him, even though he got the team to two playoff wins. But, boys, raise your standards. Raise the level of expectation regarding what is written about this team. Look, there's, there's only five outlets, six outlets that cover it full time. It's not New York. It's not toxic. It's fair and balanced. There's going to be a lot of great coverage. There's going to be some Carlos Monterez out there who give their opinion at slanted a certain way. But by and large, the media has the right to say it. And Jared Goff saying it's hyper focused on being negative is a false is a false statement. And when he perceives a statement to be false, he's right out there defending himself. So my job is to defend the media because I think that there's an obligation to everybody to be allowed to speak their truth reasonably, honorably, and we can have a civil discourse. But I just don't. Th I just disagree fundamentally with Goff's statement that we hyper focus on the negative. And I'll ask you this. And I'll just ask you this, really, in jest. If you read a heavily read uh, uh, a topic that's covered by everybody, why are we covering it? If people stop reading certain content, we would know about it. So by and large, the reason certain topics are covered in certain ways is because the masses will read it. When Jared Goff did an hour and a half interview, how many other outlets wrote two stories about it? I did. I wrote a, a, something else regarding what Jared Goff said. Everybody took that he bombed the media. Why did they write that? Because a shit ton of people are going to read it. So that is part of the business. I'm sorry that the, the, those guys don't like to hear that, but our job, my, I'm an expert in knowing what people are going to read and listen to in the masses, and that's what's covered. It's not Jared Goff's job to pay attention to that, and, and, and it's a distraction. So to me, it's a fair statement on his part, but it's incorrect. He should have just called out Bob and said, I didn't like that question. I thought the focus should have been on us and not the 49ers. So to me, I'm standing up for an outlet that I run. I'm standing up for the media because the distrust of the media is, and I've texted Jeff privately and said this, it's not that the people distrust the media. They don't understand what they're reading half the time. They don't understand the context. They don't understand what the headline means. They don't understand where the information's coming from. So there's a lot of misunderstanding and miscommunication because people's reading comprehension is not at the level it needs to be. So to me, I get fired up because I'm trying to keep as many viewers trusting the media as possible. And I'm thankful in that when this kind of shit happens, our numbers just go up. I'm just, for some reason, I, I got lucky and that people can trust me. I'm a real person. will stand in front of you and speak on it. Even when the entire fan base will rip a media member, I'll stand here and say, there's value in what we do. There's value in reporting. And remember, journalism is not to kiss the player's ass. Remember, those guys that were interviewing him were not journalists. They're his friends. There's a dog humping the guy on the couch. They're sitting in their socks, you know, having a good time. That's kind of what athletes want to do. He ain't going to sit across from me because I'm going to ask him, why are you worth $50 million? I don't think you're worth that. And I'll say it to his face. So that's where that's. 
that's where media is going these days is that we all like to hear what we want to hear. To me, if, if, and I, I always think this in my head, if I was an athlete, I would stand up there for 45 minutes and I would just talk to Carlos and Jeff and Adam and just ask me the tough questions and let's have a civil discourse. But we can't have that nowadays in this kind of society. Everybody's too emotional and everybody wants to bomb on the media. It's not right. Listen, if you, if you don't like an opinion, share it with the writer who wrote it. But it doesn't discount the value and it doesn't discount the media who are busting their ass trying to keep their readers and keep getting paid to, to do a, a really amazing job. Yeah, that's and, my opinion. And, no, and Look I, at John, come on with the John heat. just went off for a second because right <laughs> before he got out, I went off about it as well. Okay, and, hold and, on real fast before your opinion. Look, here's the comment right away from this SUS. He says, sitting there to get clicks. No shit. That's the basic of the job. <laughs> I want to write. Listen, I love sports. On when, Tuesday and Wednesday, I watched the Premier League. Am I going to do a podcast about the Premier League? Fuck no. Five people are going to read it. I write about the shit that people are going to read in the masses. So, yes, we want to write the stuff that people read because that's value. That's, and that's where the editors get happy with us. So that's the job. Yes, accept it. And there are people, maybe they're shy to say it, but my job, and I do a damn good job of it, and I'll tell you why. I'll share some news. I've already shared it online, but I'll share it with you guys. <laughs> the reason we do this is that we want to bring information that's entertaining and, you know, uh, factual and also relevant. So there's going to be topics you cover and topics you don't. That's a fact. It's, uh, I'm not uh, shying away from it. Um, but in the end, I don't have to write for clicks because I already built the audience. So I did it the other way. Everything I write will get read because I already built the audience. I did the work. Cooked. All right, John. I'm, I'm trying to. I don't even know. I think. I think. You, I think <laughs> all of your points were good. My like. I don't know. This is how I took it today, and and, and you could kind of correct me where I'm wrong with this, John. It's just like I, I think to the point to where like Jared brought this up, and then like it, it even like goes to the point to where within you know a, a couple of days there's you know everyone, and I know it's the job of journalists, and we talk about it on our show, and we do the same thing, and because it gets clicks. Like Jeff put a video out about it earlier today because it gets clicks, but I think that's like to Jared's point a little bit to where it's like, hey, anything negative that like everyone in Detroit, whether it's media, fan base, fa like me, like the Booner, like anyone, everyone's going to run with it. And it's like, okay, like, and I'm sure you watched the full interview, John, because I, you know, I went back and watched it and he talked about positive things about Dan Campbell, about how great of a coach Dan Campbell. He talked about so many different guys, Josh, right? There's just so many different things in that interview. And the one thing that it gets taken out of it is, oh, like the, the media in Detroit and everything's so negative. And it's like, all right, it almost proves to the point to where it's like this is what he's talking about a little bit, and I and, and I get like, hey, you have to win games to get positive, um, you know, positive what are the views and things for people to click, and the clicks do come from the negativity. And just to me, a little bit, it's there. There is a table, and I could be wrong. You've been doing this way longer than me, but there should be like a table uh -huh. of like let let's turn the turn the book here to where let's like the Lions are going to go win a Super Bowl next year. We could talk the negatives, but what about some of these positives that he talks about? What about some of these things that he talks about? So I do get like I see both sides here because we do shows as well. We love the clicks and we do that, but at the same time, it's like as a fan, it's. Like I was a booner path. I sat there for for months trying to get SOL fans to convert over to this brand new Lions and say, "Hey, listen, guys, this is a different organization. When are we going to start turning that table?" Like, in, in like when we used, to, I used to have these arguments with the heavyweights all the time with Jared Goff and and some of these like the the CJ Garner Johnson, all these different things. And there was just these arguments, and they're like. It felt like it was the SOL thing. And it's like, hey, if we're going to criticize him, go ahead, Jared. Like, if, if I'm going to say something bad, like CJ went at uh, easy. Say something back to us. I'm going to take it and move on. Like, that's where I'm at with it. I think it's okay that he says something, in, in my opinion. Again, I'm new to the game, but I, I just think it's, hey, like, there is negative. And in, in, like you said, in the journalism, you have negative takes out there to get the clicks. So it's like he wasn't wrong on that. But it's more so maybe just calling out all the media. I don't know if that's, like, the wrong way to do it. I just think it's like, hey, go ahead, Jared. Like, if you want to say that, put that chip on your court, your shoulder, go win some football games. Am I, am I wrong, John? Am I wrong? No, let me put it to you this way in a different way, okay? I wrote a story that said, hey, there's an NFL analyst that said Jared Goff can win the MVP, can um, he can win the Super Bowl. 
I didn't get no credit from Jared Goff for that story. I didn't get no credit for all the articles that we've written at All Lions talking about how Jared Goff is an MVP candidate, how Dan Campbell's ranked high as uh, in the uh, as a popular NFC coach, how the number uh, the Detroit Lions are the number two team in power rankings. I don't get no credit for that, and I don't want no credit for that. People read it. They understand what I'm about. That's why I am in the position I'm in. I already have the readers. I'm speaking up for those that are losing followers, that are in a position where they could lose their job if their newspaper shuts down or their blog cancels them. I can't be canceled. I own my, the outlet. I'm fine. I'm set. And good news has come my way. I've been blessed. What I'm saying is that Jared Goff told half the story. And the Lions fan report that shared it shared half the story. Exactly. He shared the most negative, damning thing that he found in the hour and a half interview. Now, I just asked the other media members, okay, you should write. Uh, we're going to have more stories from the podcast beyond just the statement that he said. But we have to cover what he said about the media. People are going to read it. But in the media, the number one thing that the players would like, they don't, they don't mind if it's negative. They want it fair and balanced. So when Jared Goff makes an incorrect comment, that's the basis of my defense. His comment is, in, is incorrect. There is not a hyper focus on the negative. There is a focus on things that people like. There's focus on things that they don't. And in that same presser, go back and watch it. There were questions that were about the game, about the team, about matchups. There was so much more. But what did he take offense to? The perceived insult that bruised his ego. Why? Psychologically, he ain't over the fact that the Rams traded him. That's what's happened. And he said it in that very comment. You know, I'm all up in my head too much. Why is he up in his head? Because the number one thing that damaged his ego and damaged his heart was the team that made him the number one pick dropped him like a bad habit. He's butthurt. He's sensitive. And oh. he doesn't want to be perceived to be on a team that's not good. So for Jared Goff, he, he's displacing his own insecurities onto the media. The media in town, in Detroit, does not overly focus on the negative. It's fair. It's balanced. There are fan networks. There are fan blogs that will, will leave out negative topics and write how great the Lions are. So you're telling me that's an over-focus on the negative? Yes, it's there. My, uh, my argument is his comment was directed at one person's question that he took offense to, and he made a comment that's incorrect. There is not an over-focus on the negative it's not in my opinion i think detroit's got a great media market that brings you great in-depth coverage factually great in-depth coverage that is of a fan variety and there are those that will hammer the team it's the perfect mix in my opinion yes can certain outlets do better i don't run other outlets i run my outlet and we always look to do the best we can but i vehemently disagree with his fundamental statement there is not a overly focused negative media in Detroit. If, the, if that's what you think, go to New York and see what it's like there when you got Ooh. 15 members of the media asking you the same question in six different ways. He's got a good here, and he'll realize it when he gets back into OTAs this year, how fair and balanced this uh, this media is. And the proof's in the pudding. I don't have to tell you guys. You guys know uh, I've been around six years uh, at the site, and it'll be around for more. The podcast is great. So to me, I don't have to worry about all Lions. I'm just talking about a lot of different things. But yes, guys, we are, as part of the job, I have to keep the lights on. There are certain topics I have to cover that maybe don't personally interest me, but I know that the masses will read it and find something in it. So you have to write it. You have to keep the lights on. And I'm sorry, um, other than um, you know the, the realities of the business, and if you don't like it, this is what I'll say to any viewer that doesn't like it. You call me a hypocrite. You don't like it. Do it yourself. Start a website. like uh, Start a podcast. Start something and join the media. The water's warm, but there's sharks in the water. And I'll show you what it's like when you come into mm -hmm. the media room, what it's like to run a media website and what it's like to be successful. Hey, the water's warm. If you don't like how the media is covering it, come on in. Do it yourself. Welcome wow. to the waters. Oh. <laughs> hey. Come on in. Told the man jump into a Jaws movie real quick. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, and, and to Brent, turn me off, bro. I got news for you. Uh, you don't, I don't need your readership, bro. I, I think you don't understand. I came to the deal already with a certain amount.
So I don't need any more. I'd like to build as many as I can. I'm set. I'm good, Brent. F off. I don't need you. Uh, Luke. Hey, <laughs> Luke, has you got anything? <laughs> <laughs> Going off the watch. He's flexing yeah. on him. That's Stop fucking with Doc. Uh, Tequila's Luke, got him feeling Tequila. himself, man. I love it. Well, okay. Wow. I'll share it because I'll lead into it. So, and for me, my journey has been a blessing. When I, when I started a podcast, I was like you boys. I was like, man, these media guys are way soft. It's boring. It's not, I don't like anything they're talking about. So I said, I want to do a podcast with my family member. And we built it up just talking about the lions, the tigers, having a good time. And we steadily grew it. And I wanted to be a media member because Justin Rose, I had him on his first day in Detroit. And we showed him respect. I interviewed Justin Rose on my podcast. And when the time came and he got a television show, I asked him to return the favor. I said, hey, Justin, I think I could, you know, come on that show, sit on your couch for a half hour and uh, talk it up. I think I could do a good job. And he said, well, John, you know, I'd probably love to, but my producer doesn't know who you are. You aren't media. I said, okay, your producer doesn't know who I am. I'll work my tail off to take a podcast to join the media. And I did it. I, we podcasted for free for five years. And an opportunity came with an outlet that was going to be affiliated with Sports Illustrated. And they took a chance on me. And I said to them, hey, I'm, I'm a podcaster. I don't want to be disrespectful to your company. I'm a bold opinionist. That's where I come in. I use my voice. I give my opinion on stuff. I don't want to be disrespectful. I don't want to make SI into anything bad. And luckily, management said, how did you grow your podcast? We can tell you're passionate. And they told me, look. You are exactly what we're looking for. And they told me five years ago, we are, SI was a magazine. Now we want to make it into a digital company. And in, 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 in several years, we will be number one. And I said, what? I, they said, we will take this platform to be number one in the world in terms of how the, the, the site's going to be viewed, reporting, team coverage. We're going to blow it out and we're going to go team by team add talented people who love sports and are local. And now the meet when you guys see it here, cause I reacted live to it. So now I'm part of minute media that's working with sports illustrated collectively minute media owns the players tribune owns send to news, which is a video player. They own fan cited. Now they are collectively the proprietors of fan nation that I'm part of and collectively it'll be reported. It's been reported publicly. SI is now the number one sports website in the world. Okay. Collectively, we'll have more page views than ESPN. And I'm part of it. And I was told it was going to happen. I believed it. I believed in the model. I believed in the passion. And so to me, I never boasted that I was the number one anything. But I knew that there was a goal in place to be number one. And guys, I'm signed. I have an ink deal. The former place I was at is still calling me. They still want to maybe still they're still calling. Why? I got lucky and I'm a guy that's passionate about covering sports in my way. And I have companies that are, you know, just collectively the 32 NFL reporters are doing great stuff. We're, we're, we're a tight knit crew. And because why we were called podcasters or just contractors or idiots. And in the end we've taken this project and a media company covets it so much. My life has changed. And it's a simple dream that I used similar mantras that Jared Goff did. I used that attitude, that me against the world attitude. Oh, oh I'm a podcaster and, and Justin Rose hates my guts and the Lions hate my guts. But I didn't take it to that level where I publicly had to say anything about it. I just went to work, believed in the vision, and I can sit here today I'm going to smoke this fat cigar after we're done. I'm going to kick my feet up. <laughs> I'm part of the number one sports website company in the world. And they love me. I love them. I'm spending money out my ass. And I, I am a, a happy man. And all because I believed in something. And I used that. What Jared Goff, I hopefully uses that feeling that he's feeling now when he's mad and insecure. I hope he uses it to win a title. When he wins the title, he'll get the ultimate flowers. He will be able to sit there, smoke his cigar, and say, I won a Super Bowl. But until he does that, you don't get no flowers, man. I'm sorry. It's one in sports. It's number one 
or nothing else. So go get it, Jared. I I, I have faith you're going to give it the best shot. What do you got, Lucas? No, I was just the chat. I love the chat. The chat's been keeping me entertained the whole time. Doc's spitting, man. I'm not, I, I, I can't, I can't sit here and let Jared say something a little bit incorrect. He's, I understand what he's saying. No athlete wants to read negative stuff. They would much rather, I, I, here's a simple thing. If I wanted Jared Goff on my podcast, I would simply have to go about it and saying, Hey, we're going to talk about what, where are you in terms of how you rank as the greatest quarterback in Lions history? And uh, tell us about this and tell us <laughs> about that. You saw the podcast. It was, the guy said he cried when Jared Goff won. A man said that to another man. I cried when you won the game, Jared. And Jared looked at him for a second and was like, oh, okay, man. So to <laughs> me, that's not how I roll. I don't need to roll that way. But I would love to have conversations, real conversations with athletes. I don't need to – blow smoke up their ass a lot of people do it for them it's it's far too much in my opinion journalism is poking the bear a little bit asking jared goff why didn't you you know why didn't that offense stop the bleeding against the 49ers why didn't the team stop the the choking when it happened why didn't that stuff happen why did you guys choke those are real and valid questions and some people will say that's too negative doc you can't write about that you can't ask that so um to mo tom mitch uh to say something positive Last year was the most rewarding year I've ever had covering sports because I've been through the shit for 15 years to finally get to write 250 articles that were positive, that were well-received was a blessing because I had written 5,000 articles talking about why can't this team get over the hump. So last year was the most rewarding year and Dan Campbell has been the blessing that media members have been looking for for a long time. Why? He gave the fan base hope and he gave guys like me who never in a million years believed prior to him stepping foot in Allen Park that that team would win anything. And he put hope. I got to sit there and watch it. And now, in my mind, it's simple. It's it's the philosophy that you would describe yourself as if you were a coach. Are you going to be a coach that tells the player, oh, good job, good job, first down? Or are you going to be like Bill Belichick? And when you watch that documentary, it's beautiful. He's like, I don't give a shit you got a first down. Why didn't you get the extra three yards? I don't give a shit. And what was said, I don't know if it was lost in that documentary. It was said, you know what? When people say, oh, the Patriots never had fun. It was a shitty locker room and, and, and Belichick was too tough. Somebody said it. He said, you know what? We did have fun. We had fun celebrating Super Bowl wins. We had fun those days when the confetti was coming down. We had a ton of fun when all the hard work paid off and we got to go to parades. So in my mind, tough. I, I love tougher media. Um, the fanboy stuff is cute. It's it's an angle. It's great. I don't roll like that. I roll with hit me with the facts, hit me with some opinions, and I want to hear stuff that's opposing the main view. So to me, it's fine. Everyone can hate on the media. You can do it all you want. I just want the facts to be actually out there. That the the the, the, the in my opinion, fundamentally, if you believe the Lions media is negative, I, I'm sorry you believe that because. Um, you're not looking hard enough. There's some a lot of positivity out there. Come to all lions. I'll share half of its positive, uh, half of its negative. That's what we that's how we roll. Come to all lions. If you don't like the lions media, come to all lions. We're uh, join the millions who read it every month, and we're fair. We we do six, five, six articles a day. Half of them you might like, half of them you might not like. Come join all lions. We we yep. uh, the boat's full, but we can take on as many as <laughs> we can take on as many as you want. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fall. Don't fall. Oh, oh, come to Beth, bro. I, yeah, this is how I look forward to Wednesday's John sounding off. That is the talk, man. John, real quick to transition into football questions. Yeah, let's get to it. We, 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 we talked earlier. We brought up Mel, Mel Kuyper's mock draft, and he had the line taking AD Mitchell, the wide out, out of Texas. What is your stance on just specifically AD Mitchell, but then taking a wide receiver? As far as your preferences, where does that stack up at 29th overall, just in the first round in general, if they move up and take a Brian Thomas or whoever it may be? Yeah, real fast. Phil, thank you so much. Those nice comments do really make the hard, the long hours worth it. They make staying up till 9.15 when I could be sleeping or hanging with the family worth it. That's why I come do this. I love what I do, and I love being part of the community, whatever the role is or whatever you guys think of it. I, I love it. And now talking about the draft. I love Mel Kuyper. Mel Kuyper has the biggest hustle in the history of sports. You know, I, I, I've kind of been seeing where people complain about his mocks, and it just seems like this year 
He's been like one mock draft cycle behind. Everybody was talking about Edna Mitchell like maybe three weeks ago. And I just feel like he's just a step behind the process. Right now we're all on the cornerback train in terms of Kool-Aid McKinstry, Rake Straw, uh, Tyrion Arnold, the visits that are happening now. So it just feels like Kuiper's in the mix, but he's like three weeks behind. I like Mitchell. I think he's got a great wingspan, can do things. I think he'd be a talented addition. A lot of people are mocking him. Wide receiver. Man, that's it's such a fun topic because this team needs so many uh, areas of improvement on defense. And I kind of am hoping it's either one cornerback or two offensive line. But to me, offense sells tickets and you have an elite offense. And if you add, whether it be Keon Coleman, who I love, who's a game wrecker, a guy that could change the dynamic of a football game, or you add a Mitchell or you add a Leggett or you add somebody else down the road, maybe you trade up for Thomas. Maybe you make a bold play. Um, in my opinion, I think that it's fair to look at adding an offensive weapon in Detroit because it's an offensive league. Um, the team struggled in the third quarter coming out of halftime. You need to score as many points as humanly possible. The game's set up that way. You got Ben Johnson. I love it. I loved seeing it because if you're going to go out there and add to a prolific offense, it'll justify making those those seats more expensive. I love it. I love I would I would love the idea of adding a wide receiver. That's why 3 weeks ago I said, "Let's do it. Let's add Keon Coleman. Let's make this let's give Jared Goff a real chance. Give him more weapons. Give him a real line. Give him uh give him great running backs, great tight ends and elite three wide receivers. That almost makes it a guarantee that he can sit there and, and, and be successful and win the Super Bowl. We need to get Jared the Super Bowl. And getting a wide receiver, a talented one that Brad Holmes loves, that puts you that, that could put you over the edge in these key games. Yeah, and Doc, we've kind of asked everyone. We've we've seen who Mel Kuyper wants at 29. We've seen who all of us want at 29. If Doc's handed in the ticket today, who's Doc taking at 29? Yeah, I'd love to hand in the ticket, right? All of us in the media <laughs> love to play general manager, right? We all think we can run the team. But look, let me cheers to Brad Holmes. He's the best general manager this organization has ever seen. He lets me sleep good at night because really whatever he does is going to be received pretty well locally. The fans are going to love it. The Pretty much the national media, if they heard Brad Holmes slamming the table in, in terms of how great he is, everyone's going to be pretty happy. So to me... I go in terms of uh, what you guys have said, personal wants. I, I, I've told you guys before, I want wide receiver Keon Coleman. I think he's great. I think he would make J Jamison Williams better, would make him more open. I think that Amon Ross St. Brown would have a field day if you have another deep explosive threat. And then you have Keon Coleman competing with Antoine Green for wide receiver three and wide receiver four. What world does this uh, – What? how crazy would that be with an offense that featured that? So uh, to me, number 29 is a wide out Keon Coleman. It would be a dream scenario. Realistically, I'm kind of hoping Darius Robinson and Edge Falls that you fall in love with. Um, that I think that's that helps your cornerbacks a little bit better than drafting a Kool-Aid McKinstry or a Terry and Arnold. So I'm hoping some way, somehow, maybe they move up for a Darius Robinson. But those are the two names, Darius Robinson, Keon Coleman, I think would make the doc personally happy. Hell yeah. Well, I'd love Doc, to hear that one. It is it is that time. And you know, I, I want to make sure we, we get to the chat here so we can get to some questions uh for you here. Um and we, we're gonna start with Steve Wilds because he asked, What's John think of the Detroit sign? You see that? <laughs> I did. Look, <laughs> budgets, man. Not everybody has money. Look, I understood that the rendering was fake. Um, it was an AI generated thing, but right. you always feel like you could do better, right? It doesn't feel like Detroit needed it, and you're going to put it on I-94. Um, I put on our Twitter page, at Detroit Podcast, over under 365 days before someone vandalizes it. Um, I, I look at, like, it, it, Detroit, listen, I love the draft and the, the all the pomp and circumstance that's going to come with it, but I didn't. I don't get caught up in signs or things like that. I dri I'll drive by it soon. Um, breaking news, I'm, I'm sure you guys know, uh, the general manager of the Lions is going to talk sometime next week. And uh, we'll get a chance to ask some pertinent questions and um, we'll have a chance. I'll drive down there. I haven't been down 94 in a minute. I stay up in the comfy confines 
of Macomb County. I don't go uh, no, south of uh, uh, south of uh, Cadu if I don't have to. Doc, hey, I saw I saw on your Twitter that you have like a nice new suit. Do you have like a, a what's going on? Is that too personal of a question? Can no, I throw that not out at there? All. I saw you had not you got all. a brand Wait, new suit. Okay, I want to know what's going on. Yeah, hard work pays off. And look, you guys can tell. I mean, I'm I'm a wise guy. I have also um, the blessing, the luck that I had was I am a licensed psychologist. So while I was grinding podcasting for free, I have I have a psychology practice. I work with people to give them that extra edge and motivation to get through tough times. I've been a, a licensed psychologist for 20 years. I have the secret to happiness. I know it. I share it. Uh, I love working with athletes. I'm I love working with sports. Uh, people behind the scenes um, regarding how to get them to the next level. And so I've been blessed in life, but this media contract is a blessing. And it, it's something that, you know, I had before. I just wanted to keep it going. I've been blessed in life and uh, I worked hard for it. And to me, um, it's now time because I've been buried in the computer for so long that it's nice that there are, you know, there's these gatherings with mental health that take place. There's these talks that people give. And so there's a black tie event this Saturday and uh, picked up a fresh suit fitted. No worries. It looks good. The lady was like, mm, perfect. She got it perfect fitted for the doc. I'm going to look good on Saturday. And I got a ah! busy, I got a busy weekend. I, I mean, with the, with the little, the little time off that we have, I've jammed it full of activities. Friday is with the daughter Saturday and Sunday, two activities with the wife. And uh, my message to those is uh, to you boys. To everybody out there is the hurdles are great. I think the book that Jared Goff recommended is great. I'm going to read it. I haven't yet. The, the, the story is the obstacles. When the obstacles will put, were put in my way, I said, absolutely not. Uh, I'm certain now Justin Rose producer knows who I am. Justin Rose knows who I am. And pretty soon, like I said, I only made one request of SI. It wasn't money. It wasn't freedom. It wasn't this or that. They give me what I want. It's a blessing. I, I, I hit the God, thank you for what he's given me. I only asked for one thing, and that's why I started doing it. I said, please, I've been a humble guy for 45 years. Let me hype up Minute Media. Let me freely talk about the success that SI has now had. And they said, John, do your thing. They don't, listen, you see my Twitter page. They don't watch what I'm saying. And I'm part of the number. I, I said this. The guy told me, he said, I'm going to, you're working, you're grinding. People don't like you. The media hates you. They call you this. They call you names. You're a podcaster. Nobody likes you. And I said, yeah, that's kind of how it is. He's like, John, you will be part of the number one sports website in the world. I promise you stick with me. And I trusted that man with everything. And I'm grateful. I've almost going to be come to tears because he told me it was going to happen. And he, he, he made it happen. SI combined with the new media company, will have the number one sports website in the world, bigger things ahead, more coverage, more whatever. And in my mind, it's a dream come true because, yeah, people will talk crap. But I don't go out publicly and be like, oh, my God. The very first time you guys saw me address the LA Times bullshit that they spewed in their paper was the first time I got authorization to tell the truth. That's what journalism is. Tell the truth. The truth was never that John Macaroon ruined SI. That was never the truth. John Macaroon never came on to fuck up an established media company. That was not my vision. If you thought that a guy that comes from a podcast that comes from a different angle was going to do a shitty job and try to get paid on it, get the fuck out of here. I did good work. I paid people to help me. I, if I had a weakness, I, I made up for it by hiring the, the experts in the field of journalism. So the coverage was always SI was dead. You guys have read it if, if you pay attention. SI died nine times on my watch. Nine times SI died because people don't understand the truth. So the reason why, and this all brings uh, full circle, the truth matters. And Jared Goff doesn't like a certain aspect of media coverage. I respect that. But by and large, the media has done a great job here. And you would be, uh, listen, I could easily bury all those guys. Easily, I could. But I have the respect of the field that I go to to say, hey, wait a minute, fans. There is some value in some of the work that you're seeing. Those boys grind, and they don't get the privileges that I get. They grind, 
and they're not happy and they are busting their ass. So for me to sit there on my high horse and hear Jared Goff say that and not make a public statement and say, whoa, whoa, guys, there's some good work being done here. I'm doing a disservice. That's the kind of guy I am. You can bash the media all you want. It's not going to matter to me. To me, I'm set. Guys, John Macaroon's happy and he's set. I made those comments for the guys that are not set, that could lose their job, that could have their company have them on today and be gone tomorrow. So I can sleep good at night because I'm a decent human being. I could easily bury him. I could say, yeah, they suck. And I can easily say that, easily. But I have respect for the work that I saw them do, the work that I, the, the people that I respect that go out there, the least I could do is take some heat for saying, whoa, Jared, their work is good. Don't, don't be such a hater, man. That's the least I could do. Yeah, that's the guy I am. But hey, Doc, the no, Boone. Jared Goff is on the Booner path, though. I'm going to guarantee you that, yeah. baby. Yeah, yeah. All those obstacles, everything. Yes. That, Jared yes. Goff is on the, the yes. Booner path. Jared Goff I throw that out on there. Booner. I want Jared Goff to appear in a sit-down interview with you in a chair across what from him. Serious. He will sit with you way before he sits with me. But when he does, I'll be your biggest fan. I'll put there a story on every word that – every question you ask, I will blog it because I respect what you do and you have the talent to get Jared Goff to sit across from you. It'll be great. I, I love that. it. Hey. Jeff, Lucas, I want the, I want you all in that photo. When you're hugging Jared and he's telling you, guys, this was the best interview ever, I'll be your biggest cheerleader. There you go. That's why we love you, John. Oh, we appreciate God. you. Yeah. Doc, look at that. Look, you got a stogie. Go enjoy the stogie, Doc. We'll see you next Wednesday, my man. I check out John's stuff. Man. Links will be in the description. All lines, baby. Go check it out. All lines. Check it out. Give me a fair review. Check it out. All I ask is a fair review. You might like it. You might not like it. But in the end, I've already set it up where it doesn't matter. There you go. <laughs> there you go. John Macaroon. Love you, John. Let's man, go, the Doc. Myth, the legend. Legend. Uh, that- <laughs> Holy fuck! <laughs> Holy Not the dog, dude. John what? got his lick back, <laughs> dude. Woo. Wow! Love Not the letting the media comments slide. <laughs> no. I, I'm, I, I, I love the doc, and he probably knows. I'm team. I'm team golf, baby. He's on the Booner path. The Woo. doc came for heads, man. Oh, he, he did. Yeah, he was ready for to go. Heads. That's why. That's why I love. That's why I love John because he does not give a single fuck. Not at all. That's why he's a great guest. I love John. He just comes on, says whatever he wants. I kind of want him back oh. before next Wednesday. I want. I want Monday. Or yeah, something. that's why I look forward to wet, those Wednesdays, man. You man. never know. We have to wait seven more days for the doc. Come on, man. Yeah, it's like it's like that. Uh, I don't. I'm not a huge wrestling fan, but it reminds me. It's like the the Rock. You know, do you smell what the doc's cooking? Like that's that's what this this segment's turned into, man. He was. Uh, Wow. I mean, Booner, I know you, you disagreed. You, you, you disagreed with kind of what he was saying his, cause he was giving the media side, obviously someone, yeah. but you, you got, you, you can kind of give your thoughts there. I mean, the, I know. The, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's such a, it's a weird, I don't know. It's a, I'm, I'm on the Jared Goff side I would say, dude, I feel like like we would say something, but I, I get a little bit to where, yeah, like the media there's, there were times that, it, it was such a good year this year to where you you know you won the NFC North you, you went to the playoffs went to an NFC Championship game, so I get like there's a lot of positives and 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 I see like the doc like I get that, um, but again it's just like the negatives that like there are negatives too and like doc the doc said like there's going to be negatives and a lot of that too is for the clicks and it's for people to kind of to get people yeah. in and and get viewers so I don't know I get both sides. I see where the doc is saying to where all media for him to put it out there is all media. That's not true, probably. And it was just the one question. I think to Jared's point a little bit, it was also um, towards like, and, and I know the Lions have lost for so long, and he's only been here for three years, but like he knows like it, there is a lot of negative media in Detroit because we've lost for so long. Um, so I do get Jared's point to where it's like, when are we going to turn those tables? Um, and, and I get the whole New York, like New York's negative. Um, I'm interested and in, I would like to go see like some other cities like San Francisco and kind of what that's like. And, and I guess markets are all different. And especially when you've been in a losing city for 40 years, that there's going to be, it's going to be a negative market at times. <laughs> I just think like the, the golf, I think it was fine. What he said, I just, I don't know. I, I get, I get 
Doc's point of going at the full media, but I, I think yeah. it's like, hey, if we're going to say stuff, like if I'm going to sit on here and say something negative about C.J. Garner Johnson or, um, you know, last year, you know, who I'm trying to think of some guys that I went at um, – or the defense alignment, and they were to gonna say something back to me, I would just be like, all right, whatever. Like, like Josh yeah. Pascal or Levi and Zarike, like you guys, like you guys have been or the or Quora brothers, you guys were trash, like bad. You didn't live up to your hype, and I would have said it a hundred times. If they would have said something back to me, I'd be like, whatever, dude. Like, I well, and, and if I'm being real, Boone, I, I, I my head is it. gonna explode with this like media. <laughs> talk. We gotta, we gotta move on here. Um, the Booter Path. That's all that matters. Yeah. The Booter Path. J- Jared my Paul, head is Super Bowl, Dan Campbell, <laughs> Brad Holmes, the Booter Path, down to that. all the way. That's all that matters. Uh, but yeah, sh- big shout out to John, man. We appreciate him. He joins every single with Jared Goff. We we look forward to it. Uh, it's just it's like chilling with the boys, with you know. He, he's oh, he's yeah. just he's hanging out. Um, and John and a lot of people, whether you disagree or agree with him, I mean, he does great work. Mm-hmm. And it's funny that you know, Pete, real quick before we move on, like people. They love John when he comes on, gives his opinion. But when it's something serious and something he disagrees with, and it's against the the popular crowd, people are going to be mad at him. But like, don't forget what John does every Wednesday, which is crush. <laughs> you know, he does. Yeah, he's the, he's the goat. So uh, yeah, John, I can't wait to have him back next Wednesday. I want to transition here and kind of go to Terry on Arnold because he did visit with the Detroit Lions. You saw this little photo. Look at that. Let me get them cleats. Put at Ja. He tagged Ja. He also had one. Uh, he posted. Uh, James Williams locker as well. So he, you know, he was kind of, and then also Russ put this out and I wanted to, um, I wanted to share this because Russ, and I like this tweet actually, to be honest with you, he, he, cause I, I never really sat there and looked up all the corners that visited with the lions, but we have a list now. And this is from Russell Brown. Shout out to him. We got to get him back in the show. He put uh, the corners that have visited the lions, only six during the pra- draft process. And his rake straw from Missouri, Kool-Aid McKinstry from Alabama, uh, Nima high, Pritchett from from Al, uh, from Auburn, Quintez Stiggers uh, from the CFL, uh, Andrew uh, Phillips from <laughs> Kentucky, <laughs> Terry on Arnold from Alabama. So there's the uh, the corners. Dude, N- Nima, <laughs> just pull that name up. I don't think that's even close to how it's spelled out. Like if you if you spelt it out, there's an H before the M. Nima. <laughs> How how would you pronounce? You said Nima High, like there's an I at the end of it, like Nima High. Man, he spelled it wrong. I was like, what? <laughs> dude, I can't pronounce that either. I don't know. I why can't I pronounce it, but like the way you said that. it was just the complete opposite of how it's spelled. I'm sorry, dude. I'm in like this mood right Jeez. now to where I'm like, oh man, I need to relax. All right. Well, ne- Nima Nehemiah, I I believe, Nehemiah. whatever. Yeah. Nehemiah. 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 There you go. I think that uh, was it. There's the there's Nima the corner high. that visited the uh, the Detroit Lions. Only only six boys, only six they've had in person meetings with, and Terry on Arnold visited. That you know what that smells? It kind of smells um, potential trade up. If they're in, mm. that they like they in love with one of these guys. That hey, if we trade up and you're available, or if you're just available for some reason, which Terry on won't be, but let's just say he is. They want him. They Interesting. Want him. Aaron Arnold, huh? that's your guy, Lucas. Uh, I was going to ask you, Lucas. <laughs> it, it, is, is it, or one, how much do you think we'd have to give up to trade for his projected area? And is there that much of a difference between him and his teammate, Kool-Aid? Because you could just stay where you're at and most likely get Kool-Aid at 29. Is there that much of a gap in between those two guys? I think coming out, No. But when you talk about all pro potential, I think Terion's intangibles are on a different level than Kool-Aid. So I would say there's a difference there, but I don't think it's as dramatic as some people may put. But I think Terion is probably the number one corner, I think most pro-ready corner in the draft. So he's probably going to go top 15. So as far as draft, what you'd have to give up, I would say it'd probably be similar to what they did with JMO. And that's why I don't not saying I don't think it will happen, but I think it's a lot more unlikely that it happens now that they traded that third round pick for Carlton Davis, just because are you going to give yep. up a second pick, a second round pick with that? I don't think so, especially if you're doing that and you're getting a corner and you don't address edge and wide receiver. I, I, I just don't see it happening, at least that did, dramatic of a trade up. I, I did see as well. Um, was it Dave Perquette? I think Dave Perquette, Perquette tweeted out um, 
that a lot more corners are going to be coming in and visiting with the Detroit Lions, or there's going to be a lot. So I, I do think it's like there, it kind of looks like there's a priority somewhere. I know he goes BPA, but there's like this is a very, very known like corner might be the position that's been visited the most or they've had on visits the most so far. Um, I know there's more weeks and, and there's time until the draft, but it seems like that might be the position that if they're looking at BPA, that might be the position group that they're like Brad's like locked in on is we, we do want to address his corner position. And the fact that Tarion was in the building shows that Brad's willing to trade. Like he's, he doesn't care about anything. He will be willing to trade up. So um, anything's on the table. I think he, the fact Tarion Arnold was in the building, I think the lions might end up trading up whether it's for him or for someone yeah. else. I would not be shocked now that unless that's just like a, a chess move from Brad, because he does usually hold his chips very, very tight and doesn't want to show people what he's doing. But seeing a guy like Terry on Arnold, who's a projected top 15 pick in the NFL draft, and you're sitting at 29, that he's in the building. There's no way he drops close to you. The fact that he's in the building shows that you're willing to make a move and trade up. So I, I would not be shocked at all if that that's a move that they make. Well, it's interesting because uh, the guy that I believe is the best corner in the draft, they haven't met with him because I don't think there's even a chance they believe they'll get him. So he's he's not, yeah. he ain't going to fall. Terry, I don't think he will either, but there's a chance he's in there in the teens, you know, late teens, that maybe they're like, we could trade up and grab this guy. And, and yeah. I, it's not like I don't like Terry. I think he's the, you know, I think he's the second best corner. Um, I do. Uh, I know we had the discussion. I, I don't yeah. think. I would put Kool Aid behind him, but like if they got Kool Aid, I'd still be like, "You gotta, you gotta, dude. You know what I yeah. mean? You, you gotta do." That's how I feel about it. Um, but yeah, Boone, to your point, real quick, I want to bring that convo up because we talk a lot about trading up and the potential of trading up, which I, I do think it's on the table. Like, yes, Brad values best player available. That's how it always is. But like, come on, like you, you don't think Brad sits there and is like, "Yeah, we need a corner. Like, we, like we mm. need a corner. Like that's an obvious thing." So. I think it's definitely in play. I'm curious, boys, if he does trade up and, and, and grab a corner, he would have to feel or not feel. He would have to know that Tarion is just much better than who, the field, like than who's there. Because mm-hmm. like if you may, if mm-hmm. you think regardless of what we think of Rakestraw, but if you like Rakestraw, TJ Tampa, you know, any of these guys, then you might feel comfortable being like, you know what, we'll stay put or we'll trade back and still mm-hmm. get our guy, you know. So it's an interesting thing to talk about there. Um, but yeah, I, 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 listen, I, we'll see. I would love Terry on. I'm cool with it. I, I still think corner in the first rounds on the table. If you're not, if you're trading up for an edge, that's probably number one. We all agree, but there's only yeah. to me, two guys that are realistic. I mean, even in Mel Kuyper's mock, you had Jared <laughs> Verse going 22, 21. Like if you can get Jared verse, I'm listening, but if not grab a corner lot to, you can't grab him. grab a corner. That's how I feel about it. But, um, I, I want to transition. We're about we, what's up. I just want to put. I want to throw something up here too, real quick, because oh, yeah. I want to. I don't know if I have it here. Um. Oh, Booner, what are we doing here? Hold up, give me two seconds. Give what me do you got? Seconds. I've got the, the, these. I just want to throw this out there too, because we're talking about a corner, wide receiver, defense alignment. Like looking at like odds right now, just based off this for the Detroit Lions, the cornerback is is the is basically is what they think we're going to take because it's plus one thirty five to take a corner, and then the next is defense alignment or edge, the D line at plus 290 and then mm. it's offensive line plus 290 as well wide receiver plus 420 safety plus 4000 linebacker plus 4400 so quarterbacks like a bit a favorite at plus 135 so like that people are like the the books the sports books are expecting the lions to go corner and i think like once you start seeing these visits happening and you see this big list and you see terry on arnold cool and mckinstry maybe they're still like we still have a couple weeks maybe quinion mitchell will end up getting in the mix and you know they'll visit him they probably talked to him at the combine tj tampa might get a conversation like there's guys that like, cooper DeGene. i i think you're going to start seeing those names more just because they want to do their, their their homework i wouldn't be shocked if, if they have them at plus 190 I'm not going to say take the bet, but like that's just like the, the odds and generally. I mean, you know, betting like that's it's pretty it's pretty nice to look at that. And we know we know we can't tell what Brad Holmes is going to do in the way the draft falls, but yeah, just looking at those, that's kind of where where the NFL world is leaning right now for the Detroit hey, Lions. Cooper DeGene had a hell of a bro day, huh? He did, yeah, he did. But and I was just going to ask, 
would you guys rather have them trade up and use capital to trade up for a corner being Terry on Arnold? I mean, possibly Quinion, but I think that's kind of out of the equation or trade up for one of those, you know, top tier edge rushers where I think Dallas Turner is probably out of the equation, but maybe Jared Burr's lot too. I know those guys have been sort of slipping, but they've been mostly in the teens. So give me, I, give me the edge because especially year one, there's a lot more production that could be there. Yeah. If they just yeah, e- yeah, either way, like, Anywhere past like pick 15, 16, there's a couple. There's a little bit more, especially when we did the list of 25. There's some guys you can find in like the 20 and 25 range, but defensive ends, the hit rate is so much more significant than corners in the first round, just in general. Does the does the corner does this ever and maybe this is just me? Does the Jeff Akuda pick ever like sit in the back of your head and like haunt no. you a little bit? No, because there's so many of them. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, it's but like, it's just like can, a corner, another corner, you're just like pfft. Here we go again. I mean, a well, little this, bit. It's but a little. I'm just, it's like I, I, it's like I the, compare, the devil I, and the I, angel, and you're really just did. like. No, no, no. I, I never compare. I always compare the cur- the regime that's currently in. Like, I, I look okay. at that current yeah. regime. Like, like Brad Holmes was going to take Devon Witherspoon. Would you have been happy with that selection? Yes. Yeah. I think it's just you more so, so for me. It's just more so like it's not like you get a corner it's a bad pick or you trade up for a corner it's bad it's just more so like that when that happened that's just as a lions fan you're like oh my gosh like please don't be the next jeff akuda like please don't do that to us because if like if you go up get terry on arnold dude you're trading up assets that brad holmes is an extremely good drafter extremely good drafter and you're giving away assets and if he doesn't hit whoever he trades up for it's like the jameson williams thing that's why i think fans are so like like harp on Jamison Williams. Like, like if you had at that point, if you already had, you know, the Aiden Hutchinson pick and you already had 12, you had two first round picks and, and you took JMO without giving up draft capital. I think you would have been like, okay, like, let's see what he can be. But the fact that as well, on top of that, you gave up draft capital that Brad Holmes, you gave away his ammo. It's like, we need you to, you, we need you to be good. Because you gave up probably two or three picks that Brad could have used two or three, and with his, his hit rate, that's two guys out of those three picks that would have hit and been up starters on this team. So it's like, are you willing to give that up to go up and get someone to take that chance? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, what's up, Coach Walk? By the way, he just shout out Walk. Coach Walk. big shout, shout out to him. Um, I, I know I see people talking about different positions, um, and, and I know you know ECL. Lions have an awful history drafting cornerbacks in the first round. They got really lucky with Slay, but he was a second round pick, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, regardless, to his regimes, point, yeah, so like to, to your point, regimes, it's very yeah, yeah, regime. I like to compare that specific regime. I think that matters. What regimes currently, you know, what he did their prove tenure, last year. I don't look at just the Lions as a whole. He did prove last year, like he's with like obviously they wanted a corner and in, in, in Witherspoon and like Christian Gonzalez was there and they passed up on him like they did prove right. that like they don't really care about the position that it's if we don't if we like someone we're going to take them and if if we don't like guys at that position we're going to pass on it because they did pass on corners last year as well guys that i'm sure all of us had at some point mocked to go to the lines like christian gonzalez and they passed on him multiple times twice actually at six and at 12 i'm pretty i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure he went after 12 so yeah he's at like, 14 the yeah so like they they passed on him so I do have full faith to where it's like if they trade up or they stay put and they do take a Kool Aid, they 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 really knew that he was going to be a dude or he's going to be a dude. Yeah, I mean, it really, the corner you don't really know with Brad because he took iffy, but he turned into a safety. Yep. And then Chase Lucas was like a flyer, so you know you you don't know yet. I, I know that he said he's were- a corner savant like yeah. he said i'm good yeah. at doing this so i'm Which, like devon witherspoon was his guy he's pretty good in seattle like, he's a oh, great he's, player oh, so like yeah. if that if you know that was um, his guy and, oh. and, and he wouldn't have traded back if he was available then it's like you know he's doing the right thing like that's a little like obviously he hasn't drafted it. you have that faith though like that's just sitting there like okay he knows how to evaluate um let's let's see here uh because i saw one comment mentioning Mikey Sanders still. Uh, Gage said Mikey plays the same position as Branch, but he's very versatile and could move. Yeah, I've accepted the fact that if Mikey's there in any part of the draft, like I am comfortable. I am. Yeah. I that's like oh, to yeah. me the fit thing. I I just that is where BPA just like tops that. 
He'll probably have the same, like if someone like like after in the press conference, like, why'd you take Mike? You have Brian Branch. He'll probably say the same thing he did when he said in Orlando at the NFL meetings. I'll, I'll take him and we'll figure it out after that. Like we'll take, we, yeah. we have CJ, we just signed CJ Gardner Johnson. We, we took Brian Branch. We'll figure it out in the season. They can, they can fight for it on the field. We'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. It's exactly what it is. Us players will uh, play. Yeah, we got we got about five minutes here. I was gonna bring up a a topic, but we'll save it for tomorrow. Uh, it, it's funny. Thirty thirteen put out a graphic about an AI simulated Super Bowl. Oh. Nah, I'll just bring it up. Screw it. Why not? And we got a couple minutes here. Just react to it. I thought it was funny. They did AI predicts next year's Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, they had Stroud. Oh, mm-hmm. oh. See, it fits our narrative, so I'm a fan of it. Uh, so <laughs> oh. you know, it, AI Jesus. respect. And It'd it was an actually entertaining Twitter. It was like Twitter's AI, like Grok, Grok, I think whatever the hell it is, like the new <laughs> feature they have. And I That's guess the question is. was, who do you think will make the Super Bowl? AI said, Lions, Texans. <laughs> a, let AI yeah. cook, boys, or what? <laughs> what are we? <laughs> what are we thinking? That's a fire I mean, Super Bowl. Yeah, it'd be a hell Super of a Bowl. Super Bowl. Yeah, it, a two two philosophies of free agency colliding. You know, like I that's a good point too. That would that that would be that's why I'm excited for the game. Um and John mentioned that actually. So shout out to him when we I wonder on. too. I, I feel like like the Lions would have the experience in that I, Lions win that game. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> Lions so win that too. game. Lions win that game. It is it's experience versus uh yeah. versus young young guys. And I think the Lions win. What are you gonna do? Oh, Daniel Hunter's gonna go at Jared Goff. All right, Daniel Hunter, meet Penny Sewell. <laughs> Get, yeah, that's a phone booth right there. That's like, what, that what, is. what is he going to do? Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. He didn't really do hey, much against him last year. CJ Stroud, meet Aiden Hutchinson, DJ Reader, and Lee McNeil, buddy. I mean, look at this meet game. Brian confirmed AI is on the Booner path. AI is. It's there. confirmed. Mm-hmm. They, they reached out to me. The robots. They reached out to you. I mean, well, you know, we got 13 minutes. I know people are already asking questions. We can just get to mailbag here. Drop some um, questions, yeah. maybe. Yeah, we got some good ones here. All right, well – um. We'll start. We'll start with. We'll start with Sarah's. Okay, Sarah's mailbag. Gentry, do you think the Red Wings get into the playoffs? Gentry's on the spot. <laughs> oh, you got. You got to give an yeah. answer, Gentry. Don't yeah, give no PR. Don't get no it. PR shit. Gentry. I do. I think they win the next two and they finish it off. I'm staying by my prediction. <laughs> the first game. What is it like? April 13th or something uh, against the Canadians. They're gonna clinch with that win. It's my prediction. I'm sticking by it. Oh, it's gonna hurt Gentry, isn't it? Yeah, it's gonna hurt. It's, it's, I'm, I'm Dude, setting myself up, but they you know pull what? you in and they no. spit you back out. No. I had my jer- I had my my wings jersey on yesterday for you too, Gentry. I went and put Did it you? on for, a, for a little it. rally mid show. No, it they were down two zero. I said I had to do something. I don't know what to do. Put a Lidstrom jersey on, and guess what? Nothing happened. I tried. Well, yeah, the the, the, the the jersey didn't help. You know, no, it was Monday, April 15th. That's the first game against the Canadians. Sorry, that game. So, that's the two, game. you need like we can win, we can win out, but we need the caps to lose, correct? Like, you need them to, yeah. I mean, you're gonna need some dominoes to fall, but um, th- like I said, every team that they're really in contention with is playing tough teams to finish out the year. So, like I said, the Red Wings got to dig deep, they're gonna have to get two, three good wins, but I think they can do it, man. I need to figure something out to get this team back on track tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, Booner, Booner, some red Kool Aid. I, I, dude, I want to so bad. I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell you this, Gentry. Don't I you do it. Me, I spoke Don't with you Lucas. I spoke with Lucas about this off air about a week ago. I want to do it. I want to. I want to do a Red Wings Booner path. I want to do red Kool Aid. I text Dmac about a month ago as well, and he said, it, "If this thing gets going, red Kool Aid's a good idea." I don't know if I can put the Booner path behind it and them not make the playoffs. Not behind Stevie By. If oh they no, I no Stevie Y slander. I will not I will not do Stevie. that. No, but no, what no, I'll no, say is no. if I put the hey, Booner path hey, hey, Stevie By. Boys, if no, I put no, the Booner path no, behind no, it though, no, and no. it doesn't happen. Jeff's just trolling, riding the wave. He's loving it. I'm trolling. Is the, is no, the I'm Booner not. path a fraud? I, I am not. I don't like is it. Is it a fraud? Like I don't like it. If I put the Booner path behind it and they don't make you the playoffs, the Booner no. path is, is no. ruined. As as your marketing coordinator, no. Yeah, it's a risk, yeah. Booner. Yeah, I it's a risk, risk, but there's a there, there's more risk than reward. 
That's where I'm at with it. Hey, Mike, I'm not I'm not built like you, Mike. I don't thrive on on misery on a on a franchise here. What you think? I want the Pistons to be shitty. Some would argue, yes. Jeff, I was there when they won their last championship. Oh, don't do that to me. I like seeing that team succeed, but under this direction, it's never going to succeed. So I got to keep shitting on him because our GM's terrible. He drafts terrible. He trades terrible. He looks terrible. He sounds terrible. I'll tell you what, boys. Well, all all I know, you have Boone. All I know is winning around here on the Booner Path. That's all we know is winning football games, winning championships. The Red Wings. I will not be backing them. With the Booner Pack, oh, no, oh, next year. they've been they've been way too they've been way too inconsistent. They they've been too inconsistent, Gentry. No. It, it's hey, what happens if they do make the playoffs? Losing the first round, like what are we doing here? Get consistent. Yeah. I mean, Coach Go Walk asked some... a fair question. He said Stevie Buy or Stevie Buy. Like you need some clarification on that, Lucas. I mean, it's twenty twenty four. What are we doing? Hey, hey, hey. We we you know? we don't. Go, I'll I'll slander Stevie, <laughs> but not that much. Not that much. You know what I mean? Okay. Stevie, Stevie I'm buy. Sure. Stevie buy. Let's make sure. You know. Hey, coach. Hope you enjoyed your dinner with your daughter. By the way. Uh, yeah. Shout out, know, Coach Walker. Man. Coach. Yeah. He 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 made it here, legend. even though he had plans. Like that's all it needs to be he said. A uh, like a negative media gentry. Not uh, true. <laughs> Not true. Uh, I'm only negative about the Pistons, and that's rightfully so. They've won fucking twenty games okay, in the past. Okay. All right. Years. All right, Gentry, you can probably make money with the negative articles about the Pistons. All right, we'll get we'll get to Anik and Mailbag. Yeah, we get a line. writer opening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I switch my professions, you know. <laughs> switch sports. I've been in that media room, you know. Hey, Anik says home. Mailbag. If you can get a line on here, who would you choose and why? We'll go. Eat, we'll, Boone, you start. Mike. No, I'll go last. I'll go last. I'll let you guys go. Well, I feel like yours is out. You've already said it. I think before publicly. Who? Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell, baby. He's yeah, my white you, well. You, you, He's my guy. I don't think I've ever heard any of these guys, though. Like, who? Because yours, you I, made I, it clear, Boone. You're speaking into existence. You're speaking into Oh, existence. it will happen, too. I will have a one on one, like 60 minute type sit down with him. <laughs> Each of us have some, some Coors Lights cases next to us, and we will sit there for about an hour and a half, and we will talk ball. We will talk everything, ins and outs. Dan, if you're seeing this, let's make this happen. I'm trying to think. I, I think, I think Anzo would be fun to talk to. Oh, like yeah, I feel like yeah. he's the type of dude like that just that. wouldn't fuck around. Like you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. there'd be a pre- like him or Laporta would be one of those two. No, Anzo's a good one. I, probably, I, I, I think overnight. I I think I'd want to do Anzo. Uh, I want Mike. I don't know. I'm, I'll probably go Saint. I think Saint would be a good oh, one. Oh yes, I love these ones. Yeah, boys. Let's he's, go. he's probably my favorite player. I love Saint. Uh, yeah. I think Saint Brown would be really good. He'd be really entertaining, but. He's the only Lions go, jersey I, go, I own he knows, currently. He knows on one of us. I only know. I only, I have, yeah, flex on me, Boone. All right, dang. He knows one of the boys. I'm going J-Mo, man. He would it's be a good the one. funniest interview, and it would be so entertaining. But if there was anyone else besides him, it's Hutch, man. Got to be. It's a good one too. Yeah, Hutch will be a good one. See, those so, are all. Those some are honorable good. mention. I would. I would say Jared Goff. I would love to talk to Jared, um, and also uh, Sam Laporta. I would love to talk to Laporta. That would be yeah. a sick one. Lucas sitting down with Laporta. Be, that would be 60 minutes. You just sitting there with your notebook, like, listen, Sam. <laughs> it's I right after the game. It. It's, it's right after the game. It's like after the 425 window, and it's 60 minutes. And it just has the <laughs> replay of me calling the shot of Sam Laporta all pro. You're like kicking annoying. it with clots or something. You're just like a 60 minute. You're just interviewing athletes. Hey, don't take how that. do we? Don't I don't even know how we go about getting interviews with some of these guys. Like some people get them. I don't know. Like you, you we were at our old when we were at our old place. Credibility, Credibility yeah, network. Which I think maybe. we have. I think we have. We're getting there to where we should be able to start yeah. getting some. Yeah. But like at our old place, it. we would have to like put requests in, and they would just like I, I've requested Anzalone. I've, I've re- like I've asked like, can I get this guy? This guy? No, 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 no. How hey, do like we go off that Booner? Be the same guy every day. Be the same. Consistent. Be consistent. Mm-hmm. I'm writing that on my mirror. I'm doing that. Mm-hmm. So let's. Uh, <laughs> I we got a lot of like there. hard questions. I peeped that. I know a lot of people are chiming in on that. Yeah, Jesse Adams, Millbag. Would you guys rather have AD Mitchell or Darius Robinson at 29? Second question. You boys going to watch UFC Street? Okay, we'll start with the first one. AD Mitchell or Darius Robinson? Who would you guys prefer? Give me Darius. 
if it's between those two specifically, I'd probably go Darius just because I'd I'd rather probably another receiver instead of AD, but I like both of them. I wouldn't be mad. I'd probably I'll go, go Darius, Darius too. Darius. What about what you you think Darius too? Okay. Well, there you go. Uh I love that. Jesse, uh, the second question. Better, gonna watch you at P three hundred this weekend. Wrong. Uh my bets I love dying on what Seriously? is that? R Hill, Jamal Hill, I think. Olive Oliveira and Erie. All plus money. That's why you're dying on the hill. Okay, that's fair. That's fair, Jesse. Uh, I, I, I wonder what prayer. Can you put in the chat, Jesse, what prayer is? That's my pick. But if we're talking betting, yeah, throw some money on Jamal. The dude, he's got I didn't realize um, UFC 300 was this week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll I'll tell you what. Gaethje and Holloway, that, that's going to be a good one as well. I, I'm going out to watch it on Saturday. Somewhere. I'll go watch it somewhere, dude. I got yeah, it. I'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, are you guys go? Are you guys gonna be there on Saturday? I, think, guys, I, I, I think so, I but I can't I confirm. Me too. That's I'm with fine. Lucas. I I right. do have plans, but I, I when when those plans are done, I will I will show up and and I will be there because I do want Jamal Hill. People are saying that I might have spelled it wrong. I just want to put it, <laughs> it wrong. I told you to keep instant? it down. Oh no! Dude, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Dude, I tried to save you. I said, "Keep it down." Not con instant. Oh, and you were making fun of Jeff for trying to say that hard ass name earlier. Oh Bro my said god! Con I wasn't gonna bring it up, dude. Con instant. I thought I man. spelled. I was so confident when 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 Judge you said that. How long has that and been I, there? Well, you guys want to know what's actually happened here? Has it's, that been there I for a while? It. No, I had pulled it up on Google here to spell it out, and I pulled it. I, I spelt it. We were just Even talking worse, about it, dude. and I spelt it. I, like I, I have it on my screen spelled right, and I still spelled it wrong. You had the cheat sheet, and you still yeah, 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 up? dude. I just yeah, flipped the bro S had the, the playbook wrong. and still ran the wrong route. Mm. <laughs> I, I flipped had the wristband and all. I flipped the S. Come the on. Wrong. Uh, I mean, that's why we love you, Boone. All right, well, uh, well yeah, ECL has the question guys. here. Easy mistake. Easy, easy. Yeah, mistake. yeah, yeah. Spelling's yeah. tough. You I like math. Remember that. Right. Don't forget, I'm you a know? math guy. Uh, well, Give me a math yeah. equation real quick. I'll Literature, solve it. Yeah, that definitely. Language, it's okay. ECL mailbag at pick 29 candle. Can the Lions get the best player at their position, regardless of what position is without moving up? Wait, can the Lions get the best player at the position, regardless of what position that is without moving up? This is a loaded question, ECL. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I don't know really what the question is. Like, can they still let's, get the best player let's, at a position without it. moving up? Is that what let's it means? Let's dissect this part by part. So at pick 29, Candle, we'll sub that out for can the Lions. I think, I think he means can the Lions get a player that's the best at their position regard, uh, without moving up? Like, like yeah, can they get a steal in the draft at 29, essentially? Can, can they yeah, get a I steal mean, at the position they want at 29? I think they can. I think there's guys in this draft that can, yeah. you could say, has the talent to do it. Like, to Lucas's point, Xavier Leggett has all the talent to do it. He's not being rated as high, but he has talent to be a, a top-notch guy. A well, Darius Robinson, a I think, could be, could be good. Not a Marv, but there's, there's specific ways. You know what I mean? Like, you mm -hmm. can... You can find a guy that's one of the best center positions. It happens all the time. You just have to find the right. I trust Brad to find the right guy. I do. Uh, John, I don't know if John you guys do. I do. I, I agree with you as well there. Uh, John Lord says, Booner is special, but we love you. Member for one month. Appreciate you, John. That's big time. So shout out to you for that. Shout out. Uh, he says, we like. I we agree with John there. We love you. We love you, Booner. No doubt about it. Um. Let's see. Eastside Chris, mailbag. You guys have been doing your thing since y'all left the other place. Are you guys surprised how successful and quickly y'all getting subs? I actually saw also Eastside Chris ask, we, will we be live at the draft? We will, Eastside Chris, which you can get your tickets if you want to attend the party. I know Mike Reed asked, could you still come say hi without getting, you know, if, I'll, I'll start with this. We'll start with this question, then I'll answer Mike Reed's question. So for him, yes, we'll be live at the draft. You know, we do a read every single day. There'll be a link in the description. If you're not attending the draft, you can watch from home. So we'll be live. So tune in. And um, are you guys surprised at how quickly y'all getting subs? I mean, what you, before I go, because I, I got an answer, but I'll let I'll you say, no, where, I'll say this. I feel I feel like the support that we got where we were before is is people like the Booner Path and, and the Kool Aid and and being you know Jeff being you Lucas and, and Gentry like I I was shocked that like like we have so many people that support us when we when we did this. But I wasn't shocked because, like, dude, I like I, I love all the people who tune into us. And I, I, when we did jump, I, I did trust that there were a lot of people that, you know, loved the Booner Path and loved Jeff and Lucas and you know what I mean. They were like, we, we, we genuinely love to watch you guys and, um, what you guys do. So 
I'm, yes and no. If that make does that make sense? Or yeah, like, I think it's a, a two, two like, way street there. I knew we would have success, and I knew we'd have support, but I don't know about this rapidly, especially just like with the nightly stream numbers. Like I didn't expect them to be because if you think about it, like what boys are down shows are like one forty. You know what I mean? Like if you would have told me that, I'd be like, God damn. Because I'll get off here sometimes and be like, damn, views weren't that high. But then you're like, oh, shit, we're three months in. And then you think about the other networks and places around the city that are going right now. And you look at their numbers compared to ours. I mean, it's in the, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, we've been and on so, our own for two months and, and we're, we're putting up, you know, numbers that people are around the city. Like we're doing what people it's taken people eight years to do, you know. So like and that's because of you guys, though. Like You guys are the ones that are like. Yeah with us so we appreciate that that's what i was gonna say maybe just surprised at how fast it's all kind of come along but not surprised in the same instance because the chat's awesome you guys are loyal as hell you're here every night grinding it out with us and we appreciate it so not surprised one bit we have the best chat out of any podcast in detroit without a doubt for sure mm-hmm. no question uh, i love our community it's it's so important with building any type of channel any show you look at McAfee, you look at that community. I love this community. I mean, I do. I think it's, it's the best in the state. We can go toe to toe with anybody. It's a smart community too. Like these guys that watch and girls, very, very smart, which I appreciate. Like they make me think. So I, again, am I surprised in a way? Yes. By the, by how quickly, but I think guys, it reminds me how much I do appreciate the people, but I do appreciate you guys for kind of jumping with me. I know Lucas was already doing his own thing. And just the fact that he came in and trusted us and, and joined the, the, the fellas, but also Mike and Boone are pretty much just jumping, you know, when they had, they could have easily just will, stayed and said, you it know, was like, hurt, yeah, good luck out there with Lucas. But uh, me and Lucas, we, we would have been on a boat, you know, driving, but the boys said we're, we're coming. And like, uh, that means a ton to me. So it was really too. I was in Florida playing golf. <laughs> you did. <Yeah. laughs> I'll say this too. We haven't really talked about all this stuff. Dude, like when, when we did do this, it was like a little, at least for me, I don't know about like, like having a show on a network, it was like, oh, like this is a big deal. And then just being like, all right, I'm going to like do that. Like that was like, oh my gosh. But like to have people support us, it was like, it's unbelievable. Like it's, yeah. when it's they, like, when they gave it makes you it way guys, easier. when they gave you guys that basically that, you know, what would you call it? Ultimatum. And you guys chose to come with with us. That was that's why I think we're we're all so close. You know, yeah. like it's a brotherhood now because all we got is each other. Hey, hey, what it is. hey. keep it up, Jeffton. Salute. Hey, I, I want to say one 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 thing too to the people. If you guys know anyone who watches Detroit sports or, or watches at other places here and there, tell them to come. Bring them here. Bring bring, them bring, yeah. bring people here. We have a a, a big. We want to keep growing. We want to be you know just keep getting boom 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 here and, and bring content to the people so bring other people wow. say hey i've got these boys they crunch time pooner jeff gentry lucas the boys <laughs> why do they say they sound like a radio advertiser? i love that shit hey tell a friend hey i, I always say here tell, tell a friend to tell a friend. friend you know tell a oh, friend to tell a friend to tell a friend tell them about uh, us baby I'm, I'm i'm very happy guys i don't think people understand how much i have i have a board here and I write stuff down that just comes to my mind about plans for the future that like Me I'm swear, I'm so excited to execute <laughs> with the fellas. And I, I promise I spelled the words correctly. I promise. It's I, all right. I, if I, you I, don't, just about mindset and about doing the right thing. <laughs> so stick with us just like you guys have. That's why whenever you make a donation or you become a member, like all the money right now is going into the business. It's it's yep. putting this thing, making this show great. Like advertisers and stuff, we'll worry about, you know, at a, at a time where we grow big enough. I'm, I don't want this to be about the money. It's about the passion. We love doing this. Like when oh, I leave yeah. shows, I'm more, fu- if I have a shitty day and I come out with the fellas and the people in the chat, you guys get me so fired up when I leave. I can't sleep till 2 a.m. sometimes. So, uh, watching yeah, Viking. I, yeah, I will. No, not watching Viking. I know you've been getting I think you know, a new show, them. by the way, boys. Yeah, I think you a new that. show. I did a new show, boys. You, a new hey. show. What show did you get? Called uh, Silo. Great show. Wow. Apple TV. No, dude, watch it. <laughs> is, it is it good? Maybe the chat can back right. that up. You know, hey, one know. more thing before we head out. Um, I don't know who the winner was. You guys announced announced it yesterday. Whoever yeah. won the brackets, you got to slide 13. into our DM. I have I have your tickets. 
Hat Boy, 13. Yeah. Hat 13. Hat I don't know 13. If, if hat 24 13 hours. Doesn't, doesn't come forward and provide information, legitimacy that it's him, we're giving the ticket to who came in third. Well, I came in second. So who came in third? We're just going to give the tickets to the next person. Because, like, it's, we might, sorry. We might but, work all the way all the way down to, like, the 15th place before someone comes up. And they, Whoever Booner's at, we'll find that. If you want, if you want some Tigers tickets, hat thirteen. Whoever you are, you have to contact us. Show proof that you're hat thirteen. If not, we got to move on to the next person. But boys, before we go, Lee in SD, Tony, South, South Lee. Dakota, baby. From SD. Yeah, that, that's that's a, that's a real one right there, man. Thank you, um, and thank you to everybody, man, in the chat right now showing love. I mean, I got Luke here. Respect what you guys do, Derek, watching live from Minneapolis, like go all that there, stuff. Yeah. Justin, um, you know, Justin, <laughs> Chris, everyone. <laughs> um, we appreciate you. Jimmy Bach. Right. Trying to. Thank you for the $10. Says don't bring John Macaroon on ever <laughs> again. Hey, Most John. Video. John will be back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, He'll Jimmy. But the doc's always we welcome. John. On Wednesdays always. at 845. You know, that, and, and that that's our guy, the doc. But also, Jimmy, we appreciate you. Thank you for $10. Um, that's big time. All right. We'll get out of here. Never uh, yeah. SD I San Diego, not South Dakota. San Diego. San Diego. Oh, shout out to San Diego Zoo. Shout out uh, Marty, the the zebra, um, Gloria, the, Madagascar, the, hippo. the penguin, Madagascar, oh, the, the San Diego oh, yeah. Zoo. All right, we're baby. getting out of here. Have, yeah. have a good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. You Can't wait for it. We'll have a special guest on, just like we always do. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace. Have a blessed night.